let's start the show. For Thursday, August 17th, 2017, welcome to This Is Only A Test, the official podcast of Tested.com. Right. <laughs> Look at that fucking squirrel on my bird feeder. And then suddenly, the Enterprise D's bridge. You know what that means with that intro. We have one of two special guests on the podcast. It's just one of them. It's Will Smith Wait. joining us. Um, Am I special or is Jeremy special? Uh, I think you're special. Oh, thank you. Will's yeah, very you special. That way. You were implying that that could mean there's another guest on the show. Yeah. Right, it, it, we, that intro only plays yeah. when either Will or Gary oh, come I on. Well, Gary oh, that's been, hasn't been on Gary, in so long. Exactly. Does Gary so, even still pod? I mean, he, he was on the Giant Bombcast a few weeks ago. Yeah. He, so he's, he's he podcasting. Promised, he did promise. He promised when we, uh, after Rogue One came out last December, he promised he'd jump on the podcast at some point when he had a free moment. And he never has. Well, we've got Jen Orso here. Yes, we, we got his gal. Right. I swear to God, I thought that was uh, Neo. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> They're yeah, completely lo- different characters. That's, that's, the chair is from the Matrix. There, it's, it's, it looks like Sad yes. Keanu from the back. Fair. No, we do have a Fair. Sad Keanu somewhere. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, we got Will back on the podcast. Will of... Foo VR. Oh, Foo VR. Wearing the shirt. Repping. I'm repping today. Well, we're, we're, we're doing something else afterwards. Yes. And we, I needed to wear the brand. Will is that's all right. over tested this week. Yeah, right. I, yeah. I, I'm blowing up tested. We're, mm-hmm. we're bringing things out a whole new right. door. We're also calling, we're calling out people's t-shirts now. Yeah, we're, I thought you didn't do back. that. You no, told me to stop back. doing that like and, five and, years and, ago. And we realized at a point in a podcast number 412 that we, we got to bring it back. I mean, it's 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 a classic tradition. Yeah, you know, I wouldn't call it a tradition. It's, 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 a, it's, a, it's, a, it's definitely is a canary in the coal mine. It's like podcast. what is? <laughs> <laughs> um, so Jeremy's also back, uh, back in the sense that you were here last week, but you were gone in between that. I was gone almost the whole time. I want to hear about your trip. <clears throat> I went to a family reunion in Wisconsin, which isn't worth reporting on. But in order to get you back, you sure about that? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Do you have a fish fry? What do you do at family reunions in Wisconsin? <laughs> we ha- yeah, we do eat. Uh, we, I you, saw a magic show actually. Okay, what? a magic show at Lake Geneva, Wisconsin. It's kind of the, kind of the middle of nowhere. So so far, you said this wasn't worth reporting on, and everything that you've said so far has been interesting. There's a lake. I forgot. Magic. It, what's interesting about Lake Geneva to this audience might be that one of the founders of Dungeons and Dragons uh, lived there. I forget his name. Gary Gygax. <laughs> <laughs> I forget. I don't think it was Gygax. Okay. Maybe. In any case, uh, I saw a magic show there, and it was I was astounded. It was amazing. Um, so if you're in Lake Geneva, Wisconsin. Go downtown and watch the magic show because it's like Vegas level stuff in this tiny little theater that will wow. blow your mind. Like he wait, ma- wait, wait, hold on. This Vegas level is uh, a high are there bar. white tigers. That's what I'm saying. I'm saying okay, there's not tigers, but there's a helicopter. That, like I'm like telling a you, like full size helicopter yes, like, a, that can fit in this small theater. I, I am skeptical. I think about thirty people can fit in the audience in this theater. Have they ever made the Statue of Liberty disappear and there? For for his finale, he he showed an open theater, then he closed the the curtains, and about three seconds later, he opened them back up, and there was a whole freaking helicopter back there. That's the big, big payoff. He That's cut. Pretty good. He put a woman in a box yeah. with acrylic sides. Yeah. He sawed her in half. You could see her body the whole time. Yes. He then split her apart. Walked around her torso, wheeled her torso into the audience. And it was still moving. Into the audience. And the, the torso wow. was moving? Yes, and she was talking to people. So it was two people. There was nothing underneath her. It was amazing. I. Hmm. It was amazing. Were you on drugs? Professional <laughs> no. skeptic. Are you, sure? Are you sure? Are you sure? You don't understand. I had the highest level of skepticism going in. What? Well, because it's a small town magic exactly. show. You should have highest level of skepticism. I, so, you know, I went to a magic show at E3 at uh, not the Magic Castle, but like the house that the Magic Castle people built, like their home house. Mm-hmm. Okay. It was this invite only thing. And like I saw the best ventriloquist I've ever seen in my life there. It was an oh. amazing ventriloquy act. I didn't th- like no. I it was I like me a good ventriloquist. Like look <laughs> I think you think about ventriloquism, you're thinking about uh Sherry Lewis and and Lamb Chop and like all the classic seventies and sixties. No, not necessarily I'm thinking of goosebumps. Bumps. Haunted ventriloquist dummies. Yeah, exactly. That's what Drinking I grew up on. While, while talking. Yes. No, no. So this one, this one was a completely post postmodern ventriloquist act. That that it was it was spectacular. It was one of the best things I've ever seen. I'm not going to try to describe it here. I apologize for yeah. bringing it up. It wasn't it was like a, a Jeff Durham thing. No, it was wait. No, it was not a Jeff Durham thing. Okay. Oh, I, I'm thinking about Jeff Foxworthy. No, there's there's a very popular. Jeff, is he the guy that's on the sign in Vegas with the dummy? Uh, yes. When you come into the airport in Vegas, I, I think so. 
Yeah, no, it wasn't that guy. Yeah, Jeff Dunham. Sorry, Jeff Dunham is a world fame. He's he's the, probably the most popular modern ventriloquist and the one people most associate with contemporary Vegas. I think the guy who did this act, I wish I could remember his name. Uh, Frank was there too, but he he was on America's Got Talent. Um, I want to know about more about this magic show that yeah. Jeff went to in Lake Geneva. <laughs> I'm, I'm, just, I'm just laughing because I just looked it up and it it is the number one magic show in Lake Geneva. Well, well, <laughs> well congratulations. Of course. <laughs> Which I think is funny. But the guy's name is Tristan Christ, and I okay. swear you're going to see him on this on the Penn and Teller, Penn and Teller show. Yeah, exactly. I, he is not actually scheduled to be on there, but I'm telling you he'll be there. And this is Chris, C-R-I-S-T. Yeah, exactly. Um, oh. Really hot magic show. I, I really, I mean, and it was a little backwards in some respects. Like, there's a little bit of Joe Bluth going on with the music, oh. you know, not quite. Oh, um, like dramatic. Not quite like Europe level. There's a place for that. I, in magic shows. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I suppose so. But there's also like the scantily clad women who are making funny, of, you know, eyes at the audience who get sawed in half. And That's, it's a little dated in that okay. respect. But it is a solid magic show. And, and I, I think m- most of these tricks are his own. Hmm. Um, anyway, but I took a train back. Wait, wait, wait. wait. wait what? It's before. over. Before, before you, talk, uh, you mentioned disappearing uh, the Statue of Liberty, which David Copperfield did how many in years 1986, ago? 1986, I think. 1986. Wasn't there a, a recent, um, there's a podcast episode about that. Um, I'm not really? Sure. Was it, a, was it, uh, it might have been Radio Lab or it might have been um, uh, This American Life. Do you know how he did that? Mirrors. Mirrors. <laughs> Nice. It, it, it was not mirrors. Um, Lasers. This is one, it's one of those things. magnets. So I was listening How to this radio. Work, I was listening to this podcast, and uh, they said if you don't want to know, because there is, I, I do believe there is a, a mystique about not knowing how. There's there's more fun in the mystery and of course and, and in not knowing yeah. than necessarily once you figure it out, it's like oh that's I guess that was obvious. Uh, so do you <clears throat> do you guys want to know? <clears throat> How he did it. You're asking us or you're asking the hundreds of thousands of people listening at home? I'm asking you guys. Yeah, I want to know. Uh, I'm good either way. I, I want to know. You want to know? Mm-hmm. So it was done in the 80s. It was broadcast on live television. Uh-huh. Um, and uh, People around New York reported that no, the Statue no, of Liberty no, disappeared. And, and, and I don't think that's actually – I think people reported as as like – First of all, the people in New York who could see the Statue of Liberty, they saw it still. It did not actually disappear. It did not actually. Wow. So the way it was set up was it was a television broadcast program. They had they built this um, this barge basically that people sat in, and they, it was in the you know, on the river, and they had the barge and they had lights shining on the Statue of Liberty and helicopters circling it, and and then the trick happened, um, like they had a giant curtain. Yeah. And then the, once the curtain fell, the, it was gone, right. And it was for the people and the reactions and the people on the barge. So it was only the people from the barge that saw it disappear, though. That's right. Like a yeah. limited field of view. Perspective. It, it, exactly. Yeah. And, and that's the, there you go. That You just solved it. So did they with, just rotate the barge 90 degrees and aim ex- it at a different part of the is, island? That is exactly what they did. Wow. Wait, they, so they had two helicopters? It was field of view. <laughs> well, the helicopter was in on it. So the helicopter was rotating at the same time. <laughs> the helicopter time. was just yeah. flying to a different place right. and into an empty platform. The, the people they he fooled were not the people on the barge because there was some debate about whether the people on the barge were in on it. Plants. And it's whether the, can they, they, and they did this multiple times, got the best reactions. It's David yeah. Blaine stuff, right? It's the people they fooled were the people watching at home. Well, yeah, because like on, an, on a 480p effect. TV. It sure looked effective. 480i TV. But apparently they built this barge up with a rotating platform that had the best – Bearings that you could not detect were moving, even Millions though you were sitting dollars on, on those bearings. I, I'm that's what I'm skeptical of. Look, I don't know if people sitting there, if you can't tell within the however minute, like 30 well, seconds it takes from the drop the curtain, raise the curtain. But if you're on a boat, there's already some movement, so you're going to be a little jacked up, and you might it might be easier true. to disguise that movement if you're on a boat. A were the point. people on the boat blindfolded or something? I mean, no, they were just standing there. So look, there was there were there were two um look, they didn't open there were the two bar. trusts. There was like a gantry system with uh with the curtain. Yeah, and they raised the curtain, and then they dropped the curtain, and they rotated it like thirty degrees, mm-hmm. just enough so that the statue of liberty was hidden behind one of the, the truss systems. Yeah, mm. yeah. Okay, the whole thing's very sketchy. Yes, anything yeah. on TV is a little sketchy. Well, they, I, I think the broadcast network that said it was like there's no special effect, and it was back in the '80s. There were no, they, yeah. they were doing this quote unquote live. They weren't mixing, comping things in. It was. No in-camera effects is all done for real. So they were being honest in that sense, but they weren't being honest in the fact that, you know. Obviously, just, there's a trick. It's, it's magic. Oh, yeah, it's an yeah. illusion. I you, don't, saw, you don't believe in real magic? I, I don't saw, trust magic on I TV. I saw good uh, rubber band, like hand, I like, I like up close, like hand magic on yes. TV. 
right? Like that's good card tricks, rubber band tricks, stuff There's that you don't see all the time. Ricochet yeah. is a great documentary. Um, there was a yeah, there's the show that Jeremy mentioned, Fool Us, that Penn and Teller do, a uh, TV show on, I think, CW, is fantastic. You watch a ton of those clips on YouTube. They're really fun to watch. What's uh, What was what was your fish fry situation at this family reunion? No fishes. No fishes? Uh, we had burgers, which, god damn, I mean, these are some good burgers. My mother-in-law makes a crazy good burger. Wow. I mean, the best. And we had a good time. You know, we went on a boat. Yeah. Uh, did some swimming. Yeah. They have a swing. Barbecue? <laughs> you got a tire swing, or like, are you talking about like a rubber swing? No, like just a like a swing, swing into the water. A swing, just a standard just swing, a, like a but tall. Like, like, did you put on like a, a a funny funny hat? And was it like that flashback from the Muppet movie where Kermit and and Piggy they see their whole life together? Oh my gosh, you went there. Yeah. No, no, I haven't seen that it's movie in too long. Okay, you've been watching that. It's it's one of my favorites. Um, no, you know, it was pre- pretty standard. Besides the magic show, it was pretty good. I wanted to talk about the train ride. You rode on a train? Yeah. Did you, you, hold on. Did you do the Empire Builder? No, the uh, California... Oh, the Zephyr. Zephyr. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, and it was... Um, Amtrak line takes mm-hmm. three days to three get days. from Chicago to Emeryville. So end of line to end of line. And three ha- full days? How do you get morning, from Emeryville to here? Yeah. That's, like another, that's another three days. Like two nights. Nights. You get on two in the afternoon, you get off at four in the afternoon. Okay, so two, two nights, you still get yeah, two nights. a full, one full beginning wake up day, yeah. and two like in the in evening exactly. and also a morning. Okay. Exactly. Yeah. Um, a little over 48 hours. Okay. It was a good trip. It was huh. a really, yeah, it was Kids neat. like it? Yeah, because they just get to hang out, you know, and just they can read books or do iPads or activity books. Did you get a, a Pullman or did you do chairs? No, no, we had a sleeper car. So okay. not a car, but like a room. So you get a family room, which is just enough space for, for two adults and two kids. Smaller okay. than this, much smaller than this room. Oh my gosh, right this now. room would be luxurious. Yeah, it's no. like a cruise ship, but but narrow. Yeah, a little smaller than a cruise ship. You know, it's more like submarine level. You get a window, mm-hmm. but it's great because that's what you do. You just look out the window, you see this beautiful country. Do they narrate Go, going through the Rockies? If, yeah, they do. If you go in the observation car, mm. they tell you mm. a little about the history. But the Rockies and the Sierras. So you see, and you see parts of that that it's, you can never see from the road, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, yeah. And you don't see the highway for these stretches, and it's yeah. just gorgeous. And you're going down the uh, Colorado River, and mm. all the the rafters. There's a tradition among them to moon the trains, and really? they, they warn you about this on the PA system. So if you have kids, if you don't want to see butts, maybe you don't want to have them see a butt and remember really? that for the rest of their lives. Um, we of course said, "Children, look, 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 look the yokels, look." <laughs> so, so we got moon twice. It was glorious. Wow, wow, the, the double moon. It was wonderful. What does mm. it mean? And then uh, you, you get food, which is decent. Like you get okay. steak and shrimp. Like, oh, wait, so hey, describe because uh, recently haven't been to Europe. They have their high speed rail, and I took a train. Didn't get a sleeper car. This is yeah. just a, a, you know a five hour train. Um, and they serve you meals, but it's like airplane food, right? Yeah. And, and we didn't have a dining. And the dining car is kind of like, you know, because there's only so much width to a train. The dining car is like half the width of the train car and that is the, the, the cafeteria, you know, the window. Hmm. The, and then the other half is is the line. Just wait in line. So it's not very glamorous at all. It's not like... On know, Amtrak, it's booths on both sides. And there's an aisle down the middle. That the, so the, the, kitchen is the, next the kitchen's car downstairs. Yeah. Oh. oh. So it's, it's sit-down booths. It's a dumb waiter. You actually two... I, uh, yeah. Uh, so there's literally more locks wow. underneath your feet. It's just like Snowpiercer. <laughs> you enjoy those cockroaches. Yeah. The, the food's not bad. It's like they're they are. If you pay for them, it's like thirty five dollars for the steak dinner. Huh. But it, for, com- it comes with a sleeper each car. Each person. Yeah. But it comes with a sleeper car. So oh. it's just everybody eats oh, what so they the want. Oh, so the sleeper car is all inclusive. Yeah. Exactly. That's nice. Limited drinks. That, that, and, expo- that explains what because those sleeper car tickets are expensive. And you stop a lot. And I, I went through Donner Lake. Donner, Donner Pass. Pass. Yeah. And I read up on that. Did you try the? Yes. Did you try the snacks? <laughs> no, we didn't stop. Did, there. Didn't get the jerky, the fish sticks. <laughs> no, the hide. No, but then I read about it, and man, I mean, I knew about it, yeah. but I had never really done any it research really on it. Up your appetite, I read huh? the entire Wikipedia entry. How's your Wi-Fi? How's your Wi-Fi or your Non-existent. cellular? No, it's throughout. <laughs> it's all cellular. Um, and uh, what's amazing is like when you do get cellular and you you connect your laptop and you're actually browsing the web on a train that feels a little like it's a That's little more unnatural magical than Tristan Wi-Fi Christ? on an airplane oh yeah um, really I'm, i don't I'm know asking. they're no 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 wait airplane is definitely more magical yeah. okay international airplane flight is the most magical let's be clear international high sp- relatively high speed wi-fi it's expensive and because you're using your data on a train that's the problem well, if like, you have unlimited data you don't have a problem oh i don't have that anymore you can uh, get it again 
Yeah, but you can turn it back on. No, yeah, yeah. yes, I'm, totally I don't want to deal it. with that anymore. But anyway, um, good trip. I mean, if, if you're in a hurry, you can't do a train. But if you're not in a hurry and you want to see this country, take a train. Yeah, I love that method of travel. And if you have kids, they're fine with it because they just get to relax. And did you guys watch the trailer stuff. for ha, ha. Murder on the Orient Express? No, that would be a good movie to watch. How much yeah, iPad time? Would. Or or a, a, a royal? What is it? Grand Budapest? No, the other one. What's the what's the What's Darjeeling, Darjeeling Express? Oh, right. Darjeeling Limited. Dar- yeah. Darjeeling my least Limited. favorite Wes Anderson film. Really? Yeah. Uh, Grand Budapest is my least favorite. Oh, that's what? That's, mm-hmm. that's fascinating. It's charming. Yeah. It's okay. charming. They're all charming. They're all charming. Yeah. What? Uh, what was it? Hi- highlights? What was the best thing you saw? Out, Out the, the window. Did you see any buffalo, or was it just the moons? <laughs> we saw wild horses. Okay, that was great. Mustangs. I mean, uh, the whole trip through the Rockies is insane. It's just gorgeous. Is, is there a, is, is there a three a.m. Yeah. poker game that happens in the diner oh, car? Oh man! Like, I, I would be tempted not to sleep and just. I mean, you're on yeah. the train. There's, there's America's happening even in the middle of the night. You're but right. What are people doing in the middle of the night? I don't know. I was with the kids. So See, that that's where you come in. That you need I, to, I, yeah. I tell me about the nightlife. The, the, night the secret life. life. The, yes. <laughs> So that's the train that they do Train Jam on every year. What's Train Jam? What's train Jam. Do you not know what Train is Jam this is? Is this like a party cruise where like the cruise is 2,000 people, but only like 50 of them are the themed I, theme so, thing? So, um, oh God, the it's one car it's, of a of a 50 car train is is themed. No, uh, well, it, it started out that way. So Train Jam is a game jam that starts that runs in the days preceding GDC. Um, oh, sorry about that. In America. In America, hmm. G- GDC America. <laughs> um, in San- you know, the one that's in San Francisco every every yeah, March. I know where G- I know GDC, but I didn't know where um, the train jam was. Let's see. I want to make sure I get the person who organizes its name right. It's Ariel something. I can't remember her last name. Uh, but but yeah. So they start in. They take the Zephyr, the California Zephyr. They do from Chicago to San Francisco, and they make a game. And they they it's a game jam. So everybody makes games. Wow, that sounds great. hours. To make a to make a game, yeah, and they uh, let's see oh, oh, about that's what we wanted. Um, they it's from March seventeenth, fifteenth to seventeenth, twenty eighteen, Chicago to San Francisco. Uh, they they uh, our uh, our friend um, uh, oh god, what's his name? Uh, the, the Australian guy who used to write for us back in the old days. Um, a oh, lot of them. God, no, 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 here. He was one of the first three stringers. He came on with Wes and Braga, and he was the third guy. And I can will I can, another will. No, it wasn't another will. <laughs> um, Paul. Oh, and I feel like a, no, it wasn't Paul. It was before Paul. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, great podcast. Anyway, well. yeah, this is I'm out of practice <laughs> on the podcasting. Um, it's a- Adriel Wallach. It does run Strain okay. Jam, and so last year the weather wasn't cooperative, and they were afraid that the train wasn't going to get cleared. But they had to like sn- clear the tracks of snow. Wow, well, extra time. So well, but it was awesome because that meant that when when they came through, it was the first Zephyr run of that of that time period in a while, and it was like all virgin snow. And it, she said it was the most gorgeous thing they'd ever seen. Oh, I didn't know they shut down part of the year. I if the weather is inclement, then they can't. Yeah, they can't ride that train through the Rockies. So. I think I follow a guy named Robin Baumgarten. On Twitter, he makes a game called uh, Line Wobbler, which you, if you go in any mm. of these like indie game festivals, you'll see it there. Yeah, it's a one-dimensional game, with it's a, basically a string of LEDs, and uh, he he, it's a lot of fun. One analog joystick, and it's like in a pitfall. You have it's to, a great game. Yeah, you have to get from one end of the LED strip to the other, and you have to avoid these bad guys and these obstacles, and it's really well done. Um, but he tweets, he tweeted once about a train jam. This must be that. I had, yeah, no, that, I had that, no idea. This is that. It's a. It is a delightful thing. Like. It, it feels ridiculous for me to go do that uh, what, with the fact that I live in San Francisco. Uh, Jason Ims is who I was thinking of also. Oh, okay. Sorry, sorry, Jason. Um, but yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a neat a neat event. And you get to do the train ride and you get the train. I think in the old days it was like 50 people on the train. Now the whole train is full of computer nerds. And I think they have wow. an entire train dedicated no to way. Train Jam now. Yeah, That's so, pretty awesome. That's so great. if you want to go hang out with a bunch of cool game developers and learn yeah. about making games... That seems like a good way to do it. And they do scholarships for students and stuff like that. A murder on that train would be cool. 
Yeah, I mean, I have I, I have a lot of friends that ride that train. I'd love to see one of them die, Norm. Yeah, Norm. Yeah, there's, plenty, there's plenty of seats on that Actual train. Actual murder is not cool. No, murder is never a okay. murder game. A board game. There you go. Murder Bo- board yeah, game. A murder board game is there. It? You go. Yeah, and they, I think they do paper and physical games. Um, if if you go to GDC, they usually have all the games or a lot of the the games that come out of that jam set up on like the third floor of Moscone West. So you what can they check should them out. do is you know you can do the uh, the dinner party games. Yeah, like dress up dinner party games. Yep. And there is one that is Murder on Orient Express. Yep. They should do that on the train. I it's bet a, people have done that. It's you, a good idea. You love that stuff. I'm I mean, sure that people have dinner, done that on the Orient Express. The, 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 the dinner dinner party puzzle games where you play, you pick a character. There's a Star Trek one. An escape Just, room, um, perhaps on a train, where you have to escape each car of a train in sequence. Yeah, that would be cool. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. You want to hit the wrong door and, and Snowpiercer out of there? Nope. Nope. Uh, nope what nope, have you been nope. up to, Will? Uh, I've been t- doing a kind of a lot of stuff that I can't talk about today. Jeez. But we'll be able to talk about it next week and the first week in September. Um, we have, uh, since I think I saw you guys last, we've recorded a couple episodes of the Foo Show that are in the can and oh. just waiting on us to have time to finish. Uh, one is with a biophysical chemist or, or biochemist named uh, Sean Douglas who makes nano machines out of DNA. And we get all powers of 10 with him and get crazy and see how nano machines work. That which sounds is really like a cool. great application of Foo. I, 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 felt, I thought so. Um, it's, it's, uh, we put a fairly ridiculous amount of time into making the world that we explored hmm. um, using a lot of his assets. And then we built some of our own and, and like we literally shrink down and down and down and down and down. Um, we did another one with the guys who make Warhammer 2, uh, Total War, Total War Warhammer 2. Uh, and just like they taught me about Warhammer. I didn't I, like I'm not a Warhammer guy, guys. No, sorry. I'm not a D&D guy. Um, and uh, I learned about the difference between Warhammer 40K and or 20K. Like I, I, I learned about the difference between the ones with guns and the ones that are just orcs beating the shit out of elves and dwarves and stuff. It's all the same universe, right? It's all the same universe, just but like 20,000 years apart. Sure. I, I, yeah. is, is it the orcs there in the future? In the post post the, post 40K apocalypse? Yes. The orcs, the green guys that look like Warcraft orcs that Warcraft probably ripped off are Warcraft are, are orcs from the past. Oh, then the past. But but the Total War Warhammer games are set in the early timeline where it's all like medieval warfare and there's magic and and like it's not it's not the it's not the guys going Space Marines, which is what we all remember from that that uh, Warhammer Space Marines game. It was a good talk. It was really interesting to talk to those dudes and they love Warhammer. So those are as soon as we finish doing the the contract stuff that we're doing right now, which I'll be able to share next week hopefully some of it, and then again on September sixth even more. Um, Outstanding. Stay tuned at Will Smith. Yeah, at Will Smith on Twitter. And I'm also playing a lot of PUBG. Yes, I want to hear about your your PUBG. Is is PUBG or is it PUBG? I call it both because I think PUBG is terrible and I like things that are terrible sometimes. Okay. Uh, it's Player Unknown's Battlegrounds is the name of the game. We've talked a little it, bit about it, but it, we've never had a seasoned Twitch streamer on, have, on the podcast here. I have put talking about literal it. hundreds of hours well, I, into this I, I, game I'm at this point. I'm, I, you, the stats um, sh- sh- uh, show themselves. You and Gary. Have you lost track of your chicken dinners? I do not know how many chicken dinners I've eaten at this point. Wow. Statistically, I'm very impressed because like the amount of chicken dinners I see you between you and Gary and the friends you play with. Like, I'm on a real cold one out streak of right now. Yeah. Right? So there are a lot of losers out there who are not getting chicken dinners you, you, well, for every chicken dinner you got. So if you're playing a squad game, it's one team out of 25 or 26 yep. is going to win. Yep. Um, but yeah, so the, the setup for the game, if you don't know what it is, is it's basically Battle Royale, right? You you and oh, 99 the, the, of your the friends. listeners know. They're just very oh. misinformed about the, the oh, mechanics. You, you guys explain how it works. <laughs> yes. And the true, <laughs> true, this is only a test fashion. <laughs> tell, t- tell us, though, about the, the, the streaming lifestyle and like what, what it means to... Uh, to stream these games and and the so, intensity that goes into so I started I started streaming this game because I actually really like watching pe- like like I never understood like you used to watch StarCraft a lot and I yep. kind of I, like I understand that conceptually but it wasn't for me well there were commentators yeah but like I wasn't I wasn't like I wasn't into StarCraft enough and like I I understood like basic build orders and stuff like that but I was didn't care about high level strategy enough or to like personalities yeah to to watch hours and hours of StarCraft games uh, same thing for Dota like I've watched bits like I watched the noob feed for the international a couple of times and it's interesting but it didn't grab me wait there's a noob feed yeah so when when Valve does the international the best one I think was the TI four one five, five four or five years ago and they do different commentary. Like they do a commentary for people who don't understand Dota. That's brilliant. It's really smart. Um, they've only done it really, really well once, maybe twice. The one this year wasn't so hot, um, but but you know, like it's Valve, so they're learning and Love trying the new stuff. Love the concept, though. 
Um, so yeah, so I, like I started playing this, and then I started realized I was like watching as much as I was playing. Mm. It is, it is. You know how when you hear about emergent games where you play the game and then people tell you all these amazing stories about weird shit that happens and it sounds really cool and then you play the game and none of that stuff ever happens? Yeah. This game is not that. This stuff actually happens. This stuff actually happens. Like the vehicles, it, it is a really good mix of janky and massive and multiplayer. It's a, it's a, it's a murder simulator. Kind of, yeah. So you Survival drop, simulator. So you, so you get thrown out of this airplane with 100 people. You have to kill all of them to get a chicken dinner. And uh, before you can kill them, you have to go find weapons and scrounge that stuff out of the world. And it, it is a it is an endlessly fascinating game. So everyone story. parachutes out naked. Everything basically. I mean, like you, with you the have t-shirt clothes. on your back. Yeah. So no my, weapons, no, no armor. Just your fists. My issue with this concept, like I love the concept of the battle royale. Right. The battle royale of is yeah. is uh, and and the 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 bat, too bad you got the frying pan. You land in the wrong place. That that like is perfect for storytelling. The fact that most people who play now, especially the people who are streaming and playing, mm-hmm. are so good at this game that there's already multiple meta levels above the base game in terms of the stunts they're doing, in terms of the gear they're equipping. It it becomes less accessible and it takes away from the the terror. Well, so so okay, so this is the thing that I, that grabbed me about the game. There's. Uh... There's, there are tons of meta levels. Like it's like a pancake, basically, right? The first meta level is that you drop in, you loot, wep- you loot weapons, and the it's most a flaky ter- croissant. Many levels. Yeah, the most, the most terrifying thing that can happen to you is seeing another human being, right? Early on, it, it, just at all. Like oh. if you're, if you're, if you've just started playing and you're playing by yourself and you see another person, it's fucking scary, right? And then the next level is, is, and you shoot at them and then they shoot you and you die immediately, probably. The next level is when you've played enough that you think, oh, I can't kill that person right now. I'm not going to shoot, right? And you hold off and you you learn to control. It's much more of a strategic and measured pace than, say, your Call of Duty, where as soon as you see somebody, you should put a bullet in their head or they're going to kill you first. Um, and, and, like, concealment and cover and things like that make much more sense, may, are much more important like they are with something like Arma. And you can get that kind of, that kind of tense... You know, more realistic combat situation like you do with Arma, but in a forty-minute game instead of a six-hour game, which is what, what was my all my experiences with Arma. I feel like the game would benefit from more stakes. Yeah, you know, the game's lasting longer. You think chicken dinner's not enough? Uh, buy-ins, buy-ins, rewards, and heist, and, and drawn more drawn-out. Right, I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and tell you, I've won at this point probably a couple of dozen, maybe twenty chicken dinners. Wow, they're all satisfying. Really? Like the, like even like last night. I started streaming. The first fight of the night was basically uh, me soloing to number two and then choking on the very last guy. What, what does that feel like? So tell us, because you've done this obviously more than 20 times yeah. now. What does it feel like when you're like the last three people? Because by then the world has shrunken down. Yeah. The barrier's down. It's like it's the size of a town or something. It's, it's, right? usually, it's usually 150 or 100 meters across at that point, a what circle. Is, what does that feel like? 150 meters is not big at all. Like you know no. where the person. Like you can't be. use an 8x scope when you're in those final circles because it's too too much zoom. So you you've survived for at least 20 minutes. You've gotten down. Yeah. Do you do you by then most likely know where the other person is or Sometimes. have a sense of like Sometimes. Maybe hunting each other or just like they'll they'll pop up and is it or is it like a, a real cat and mouse at that point? So last night the cer- the final circles were bisected by a hill. So some people were on one side of the hill, some people were on the other. I was, was in a, team a field. Based one. No, this was solo. Oh, solo. Okay. So I was in a field. I, I knew where all the people in the field were, but then there were two or three, four people on the other side of that hill. No clue, hmm. right? So I'm, I'm sitting there. I take care of the guys on my side of the field, and then the circle moves me over to the other side of the hill when I was hoping that they would get pushed over toward me, and I have to crest that hill, and I got one of them, but the other one got me. So, like, it's, it's in the beginning when you get to – the first time you get to, the, like, one of those close final circles, you're going to get the shakes. Like, I get literal adrenaline response. I, I used to get literal – I mean, it was – Something I'd never had in a video game before, right? <laughs> Can't wait to go home, put the family to bed, yeah. and get get online so I can get my get, get my fix. Get some of that get good my murder. Shakes. But but so that goes away after a while. You get used to it, right? <laughs> you need new thrills. Yeah, and then and then you then that's when you start flipping motorcycles and all that business. Um, there's a Chaos. there's an insane amount of depth to this game. It's still really accessible. You can bring new people in. Um, I highly encourage you to go out and hop in a duo with somebody who like knows what they're doing. 
uh, so that you're not dragging down a whole squad if you're new and don't know don't know how to loot, don't know what weapons and stuff you need. Um, there's a lot of internalized lore. It's a game that you kind of read the patch notes, and I haven't played a game like that in a really so long time. So the game's not so. even finished yet. It's still in early access, it's, right? So what are they going to do before it's actually finished? So the stuff that they're adding, they're adding a lot of polished stuff. Like the, a couple of patches ago, they added animations for using healing items, whereas previously it was just like a ticker that counted down, basically, and Cosmetic that was all you saw. Things. Um, they're doing a lot of balance passes still. I think they're going to they continue are. balance passing passing forever with this game would be my guess as long hmm. as people are playing. Is there any indication that in the team game at the end when your team wins that then you it's free for all and I, God, one I want person, that so bad. And one person in the team yeah. has to be the, the the real chicken dinner winner? Sorry, Peter. Right. Yeah, I I would love that. I don't know that they're going to do that. Hmm. Um, <laughs> they did ban a couple of streamers a few weeks ago for like teaming up with randos. Uh, and then, like, they, there were three guys, three of the better players streaming. They team up with randos and then they, and well, backstab? Is there, is there friendly fire? So then they only had a three-seat vehicle. So they had a three-seat motorcycle instead of a four-seat. And the rando wouldn't get out of this, the third seat for the one of the good guys. Why did he get banned for that? So he just shot him in the head. And he got no, banned? The rando didn't get banned. The guy who shot him in the head got banned. From the game? Yeah. Well, probably. I, I don't know if it was a temp or forever. It seems like he's using wow. a new player name now. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Yeah. So anyway, if you want to watch, I'm on twitch.tv slash not that Will Smith. Don't throw away your shot. No. Gotta give that away. It's it's such a good game. Check. <laughs> Wait, pop culture? Yeah. <laughs> I thought that was pop culture. This is a loose ship over here. Since we're half hour in, I figured we were at least the no, tech we're section. Still, we're still in pop culture. By the way, it was Gary Gygax in Lake Geneva. Oh, yeah, he's the, he's the only D&D he's the D&D founder, founder that yeah. you know. I know there were more than one. Um, so, uh, some good news for uh, fans of anime. Uh, any fans of anime in the room? Uh, Miyazaki. Yeah, I like Miyazaki. Is coming back. Really? Working for Studio Ghibli, making a new film. The he, retirement was short-lived. I don't feel like this is the first time. Is it? I th- I feel like when he retired last time, we had this conversation. Yeah. Well, the last time they made a big with... deal about the 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 movie he made about the uh, the World War II plane, the designer of the right. Zero. That it was the last film, uh, and that was going to be his last film. And Studio Ghibli had been putting out films afterward. He just didn't direct them. So turns out, how old is he actually? That's a good question. Uh, but a recent newsletter from Studio Ghibli confirms. That he's back in the office. Mm. The hiatus from 2013 to 2017 was very short-lived, and he he's gonna make a new film. 76. 76. Oh, yeah, he's, I mean, Scorsese's like up there. <laughs> 80. Right? Yeah. I don't think he's 80, but I think, I think they're they're similar age. Uh, his newest film is called Borrow the Caterpillar. Is it about a caterpillar? I, I or is this like a great so? the fireflies thing where it's not really about fireflies? Oh, it's about st- hunger, hunger, starvation, and. I don't think Grave of the Fireflies is a Miyazaki film also. it's not. Uh, So uh, he's been apparently working on this film at home, just not at the studio, Hmm. uh, for since the beginning of this year. But he's back in uh, in Studio Ghibli and and working on the film. So looking forward to that. I I have to say, we went and saw Totoro and um, Kiki's Delivery Service in theaters with a big crowd crowd of people a few weeks ago. They did a five-day run, right, where every day was a different Miyazaki film. It's five months. Oh, is it five months? Yeah, so there's one a month, and they do... Is it a month or a week? No, (laughs) I guess it's it's a month. month, Yeah. Yeah. Um, They're doing... I think the next one is Spirited Away. Mm. Uh, And they do uh, dubs on Sunday matinees for kids and subs on Monday nights for adults. Wow. Yeah. We watched uh, Kiki's Delivery Service because we recently built a paper craft model from Ooh. the film. Which one? Um, just her house. Her parents' her her mom's parents house? house. The okay. one she leaves in the beginning of the film. That's, that's a, a good, that's a good one. Yeah, I'm talking cat and everything. That movie's that movie is uh, delightful. They're all good. So says yeah. he is 74, so they're very similar yeah. age. And Piers. He's, yeah, exactly. Um, fans of Lego, assume. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yep. you know, Lego comes out. They, they have licenses for Star Wars, Marvel, superheroes. They, they have, have everything. They have Ninjago. They it's, have movies. They're the brand. They, yes, and along with Disney, though, they also yeah. are an IP factor of sorts. Um, even though their movies come out of Warner Brothers, uh, they uh, if you if you browse the Lego enthusiast websites and the forums, you may see leaks for box art because they manufacture in advance. And they and people have long used Lego box art and the names of even the sets to fish out. Um, 
plot points of movies. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's it's a terrible thing to do. Like, are you going to spoil something? No, totally not going to spoil anything. Uh, but uh, I will spoil the one product that is supposed to be coming out later this year, and it is a BB-8 Star Wars Lego set, like a like a like similar like a scale. No, it's similar in scale to uh, the uh, the R2 that you made. The UCS? Yes, but a BB-8. Now, I'm a little skeptical about this, because <sighs> same with the R2. It's Darth Vader. S- s- same with the R2, uh, the spherical shape, Lego doesn't really lend itself to that. But R2 is awesome. Because Le- Le- R2 is more cylindrical, with He's, only the yeah. dome on the top. BB-8 is two spheres, or a half dome and a sphere. Well, a and dome is half of a sphere, you know. Y- yes, it's true. Yeah. So one it's and only a half spheres. For R2. One and a half spheres for BB-8. Yeah. Now the leak photo of this uh, BB-8 set did not indicate that these the panels would be smooth. Because sometimes when you make curved surfaces, you can mm-hmm. have like the the stepping of the bricks, and then you can also put on like yeah. these panels, like like in the Yellow Submarine. Um, but it wasn't the case. Uh, that is. Theoretically coming out later this year. So but th- this photo is not supposed to be. This revealed. is not that. Okay. But what is uh, not an official Lego set is a fan-made BB-8. Oh. That's amazing. There's a Flickr link. Uh, if you actually, if you search uh, "Brothers wow. Brick," um, this BB-8 that a fan made actually has motors inside that rotates. It, it's on a pedestal. And it rotates his head. It looks like it That's rotates bonkers. not only the head but the body spins on the Shut platform. Up. The body, body spins on the platform. How's wow. the body spin? You got to enable Adobe Flash to play the video. <laughs> I was told not to <laughs> do that. Seems like anymore. a bad idea. Here you go, Jeremy. It's probably not worth it. Oh, it's, it's not on a Windows machine, no less. Norm lives dangerously. I, I, I'm plugged into power. No fear. Here it goes. Flip that switch. Look at that. <laughs> That's cool. So it's actually an illusion. It's an illusion. That's because it's... a great idea. So yeah. half of the dome or whatever we can see here spins as though he's rolling. Right. But he's, he's actually stays, he actually stays stationary. Uh, yes. And then the head rotates around that and does yeah. a little bit of pivoting. Uh, the guy's name uh, is Takamichi Iri. And um, he has a Flickr page with photos of this. Totally worth checking out. The uh, It brings more disappointment to the upcoming BB-8 official Lego set because that one isn't going to be motorized uh, it looks like and that one also doesn't have the flat panels that I like on my Lego sets I uh, I finally built my Wally. uh that's a Kusu great set kit. and yeah I had the one that was the uh, initial broken neck like mm. the bad neck and I sent them a note and they sent, just sent me the pieces to fix it Nice, along with instructions both for doing it from scratch or retrofitting the one you've already finished it was really that, cool Th- that is a beautiful. Oh, it's gorgeous. Um, did you know who designed that set? Yeah, it was um, Angus. It was Angus McLean. McLean, yeah, Pixar who, director. Who directed? Who was the co-director on Dory That's and directed right. a Toy Story of Terror and I think Small Fry, one of the other uh, Toy Story your, shorts. You know your Pixar directors, Look, man. I got he, this dialed in. Yeah. You need to get him over here to do a Lego with friends. We actually uh, did do a Lego with friends with him. <gasps> it is on the site. Yeah. What? <laughs> yes. <Keep doing> that. <laughs> what? <laughs> he built with Adam. I was it was actually while well, I was on vacation. What did they I want to say uh, they built a, a yellow submarine. I believe. Oh, nice. Okay. Yeah, that's a good uh, one. But he's working. He's a Lego with, master builder too, right? Uh, I don't know if he's actually a. He's definitely Official? mega fan, but I don't yeah. know if he's a a, a certified took the test gotcha. to be a, a Lego master builder. Yeah. Well, I was looking through your Twitter here. I was trying to find out how to sort by your most liked tweets. Do you have any idea what I your most liked tweet uh, you would be? you got to go to favestar.fm slash Will Smith oh, would be my guess. Oh, that's beyond me. Well, Twitter has a new most liked tweet of all time. It's not Ellen and her selfie mm. at the Oscars? Which is like a great photo, right? I mean, you understand like why the, that was so popular. It was also a promo piece. It was, a sam- it was to promote the Samsung phone. Oh, I forgot that. It was like done with the Samsung phone. It Wait, was that a, was a that was a that was a product placement. It was a one hundred percent product placement. <gasps> yeah, selfie she could. With that I phone. mean, that, that photo had no right to be that good. I mean, it was. It turned out great. It, it, in, in terms of how spontaneous, yes, were and everybody's the level in of celebrity. It. Nobody's eyes are closed. Yep. Yeah. It was great. Yeah. Um. Anyway, new most liked tweet of all time, Barack Obama. How many? How many likes? Um. Over four million, I think. Uh, quite a lot. Let me see here. Uh, the the t- official Twitter tweet about the fact that it's the most liked tweet itself has over three hundred thousand likes. That's a lot of tweets. That's meta level. Let's see here. Meta level likes. Yeah, we're, so four point oh, two million. This is the one where he goes into signs the babies in the window wherever he walks. <laughs> this is this is a boss baby tie-in. 
<laughs> you think this is product placement? Yeah, this is this is this is totally DreamWorks <laughs> pushing their boss baby nonsense on us. No, he's he's you have a, kids. Don't get them boss baby. I think it's a Nelson Mandela quote. It's a three part tweet. This is part one that got the most likes. What is the, uh, the how many of those likes sustain post the first part? Not as many. Oh. It's a big trail. I, I, I bet it's a t- massive order drop of ten. Off. But when somebody does the multis, do you really like all three? I don't like all three. I like the last That's one. That's too much work. No, if, if if someone does, if there's a tweet storm and it's like read this thread, yeah, I like as many of those. Do you as you yeah, like as I like? Yeah, exactly. Because they resonate. That gets weird though. It's, it's like the medium. It's it's like the Twitter equivalent of highlighting on Medium the sentences that you like. But then you should highlight the first one so that people don't get lost. They jump in the middle. They don't know the context. It's true. I think you should only like the first no, one. You retweet the, the first, first one. one. I but see. You like <laughs> the ones that resonate. The quote is: "No one is born hating another person because of the color of his skin or his background or his religion." A nice little antidote to what happened last week. Yeah. That uh, is a topic we won't be discussing today. No, that's the most political we're going to get. Let's talk about tech news. Favestar gates your top tweet behind a paywall now. Whoa. Yeah. Social media experts. How much is narcissism worth to you? Not not whatever. You can't, not enough to click the link to find out how much narcissism is worth to them. <laughs> you can't redeem your clout points. No, my clout, I don't think clout points are worth anything, Norm. I dare you to check your clout. I think it I turned tells it, you. I, I think, think it I tells you it last off. checked last check clout. Does that even exist? I'm afraid to go. Oh, it's still there. Wow. Oh no, I'm not a brand or an agency. <laughs> I can't believe it's a real company. Um, So uh, you mentioned that uh, Studio Ghibli is, uh, the Miyazaki films are appearing at AMC theaters once uh, once a month. Uh, How often do you guys go to movie theaters these days? Dude, I want you to explain this to me. This is crazy. I Personally, I actually don't even go to the theater once a month. You don't go to the theater? No. This past month, I've been four times. In the past wow. 30 days. Yeah. There are a lot of good movies out there. No doubt. But you don't have children. Yeah. The uh, children, it turns I, out, turn, makes I, it a I complex thought, uh, undertaking. I thought going with children is a way for easy daycare. Yeah. I, I thought about taking my daughter to see Wonder Woman and then decided that that was probably a bad idea after I watched Wonder Woman. Well, it's not Dunkirk. <laughs> I thought about taking my child to see Dunkirk, and then I just realized that that's a bad idea Mark, because Dunkirk. That you're a good parent. There's there are probably plenty of kids' movies. There's parents that make the opposite decision. When I saw Fast and the Furious Seven in theaters, there was there was a family with like six kids in there. Yeah, it's messed up. Yeah. Wow. So explain Movie Pass to me. Yeah. So it's a serv- It's actually been around. We've talked about it. Uh, we talked about it years ago. Yeah. Uh, maybe I, like, at least a year ago. Yeah. We the, no, we talked about it in the basement at one point. I guess it's been around since 2011. Yeah. yeah. So a long time ago. It was a really expensive. Deal. It was a pay a monthly service um, that you would uh, monthly fee, and you get to thirty dollars a month, right? My cloud and is sixty nine, by the way. Out of a hundred, is that three hundred? You have, you, I think it was Justin Bieber and a. Oh no, uh, that's right. That's my ninety day high. My current is sixty seven. Oh, that's still pretty good. Yeah. Someone's gonna have to listen to an old podcast and know what Will's clout was back then. I need to go engage more. Uh, so. Back in 2011, when it launched, Movie Pass, pay 30 bucks a month. You get an app on your smartphone, mm-hmm. and when you see a movie, you swipe your membership card, and you get to watch as many movies. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Oh, no, you only get one a day. One a day, sorry. One one movie a day. Up the you know however many days. Oh, this is the old deal. This is the old deal. Yeah, thirty dollars a month. A month. So uh-huh. if you watch three movies a month, you're good. Yeah, if you watch thirty, with some you're, you're great. If you if you watch thirty, you, right. you got plenty of time. In your hands. does this work with stuff like IMAX and Alamo Draft House? No. <laughs> So it's only certain theater chains, and but the the new deal is I guess uh, Mitch Lowe, who's a co-founder of F, uh, of Netflix and president oh. of Redbox. Did you know that co-founder of Netflix is the president of Redbox? That makes sense. Um, He's the disc guy. Remember they used to have he, discs in yeah. Netflix, and now it's all Redbox. I mean, no, they, they still have discs in Netflix. Also, those, it has a different name now. Down. Yeah. Um, now it's only ten bucks a month. Nine ninety nine. That seems like a pretty good deal, dude. It's so, an impossible, possibly good deal. So no and 3D. Even which the, is the a CEO plus. has the, the CEO yeah. has even said this is not a, a sustainable this is deal. sustainable business uh, model. I mean, here here's the thing: you can't pre-order tickets, so like you have to bite at the door. You have to bite at the door. So that means so, if you want to go see something popular on the first weekend in a big it. city, reserve seats. You're boned. No. no reserve seats. No. 
That's I mean, fine. I guess you can get reserved seat tickets if whatever's left over. Right. Yeah, right. But there are a lot of places. When we're talking about. We're approaching this from watching movies in major metropolitan cities, mm-hmm. with big uh, downtown cineplexes. Yeah. But in most of America, there are many theaters in the middle of nowhere, just like off the freeway that people can go to. You mean in people's towns and in ha- people's and cities? Towns. Yeah. And that would be a perfectly great deal. Well, to I, watch movies, just like to spend your time. I never saw a full movie theater in my life until I moved to San Francisco, right? Like I went to see Return of the Jedi in third grade with a school field trip and like there were a million kids there. That theater was full. Like if you just went to like the Friday night at seven o'clock showing, there were always seats. So, so yeah, this is a, this is good. This is a good, I think this is a good service. I would pay for this if I didn't have a kid. If you could sign up for it. Oh, you can't sign up for it? Try. The website, it's, the website it's, is inaccessible most packed. of the time. And yeah. I, if you get through to it, like the sign up button doesn't do anything. So the way the business model works and the way it's really unsustainable is that they don't actually have specific partnerships with theaters. It's like the card, the the, the key you get, the, 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 the membership, membership card yeah. that works like a debit card. And you go to a, your theater, you swipe your card, and whatever the movie ticket costs, whether it's 14 bucks or 18 yeah. bucks. That gets movie pass pays the theater mm-hmm. that money, and so you can't opt out. Like if AMC has come out and said this, we don't like this. This is shaky. Like we don't like this. This is not sustainable business. Uh, but they can't really opt out unless they stop accepting debit, debit cards. cards. Yeah, or uh, targeting so the movie pass. It's cards. an actual Visa or Mastercard debit card. I don't know if it's a like what what, what it works the is, same way as it, one. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah, I have a friend who's been using this for years who lives in New York. No kidding. Yeah. But I mean, she was using it when it was expensive because she lived next door to a movie theater. Yeah, and was just like, now I, I just if I if I don't know what I'm going to do tonight, I just go see a movie. I mean, theater and, chains. I don't know. What, should they be embracing this? Should they be coming out with their own system? I mean, that that seems like the right answer. Like like AMC charging you ten bucks a month for one a day access to extra, the, uh, like well, but but to like extra extra seats. If you're not selling, remember. Here's the thing to remember: the movie theater makes money on 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 Sessions. everything else at the movie theater except yep. for the movie. Yeah. So, I, I mean, so it, should yeah. they be embracing this? It so gets why more is people a- in theaters? Why is AMC not? Well, maybe maybe the, their cost per seat on the maybe they're losing money on the seats if they're getting less money per ticket. I don't know. There's, there's also there's economics concerns about devaluing the well, the consumer's value of the the theater experience. Like that, that's the thing they're probably worried about, which is conceptual and difficult to say, hey, this is a real problem. Yeah, I wonder about that. But yeah. the, movie th- the movie theater isn't losing money on this deal. Like, cause they, just, they get the full ticket price. Yeah, they just charge what they want. Yeah. I mean, that sounds, that sounds great for the movie theaters. They would love this. I mean, it seems like if the movie theaters did it, though, then they wouldn't be able to do it that way. It would be that right. they're right. discounting. I don't know. It's, it's a weird situation. I don't know. It feels like bubble talk to me. It feels like this is just one of those weird businesses that's going to blow up and burst. If they start doing that at the chain level, then they like the movie theater knows what the what the revenue per user is on concessions when they hit the door, and they'll know. Like basically, then you're saying we're going to loss lead people in the seats to sell more popcorn and hot dogs. So they're afraid that it's going AMC and I guess maybe other big theater chains are afraid that this sets up consumers for disappointment. Yeah, because it's not very clear. It's one, it's unsustainable, and two. Um, it's not very clear that people have that expectation that they're paying these $10 a month. It will sour the overall movie-going experience if the illusion is that you're paying $10 a month, as you would on Netflix, to, to watch unlimited movies, when it's really not the case. Like yeah. they, they should be really clear that these are either for second-run movies or really... You know, well, it's you, first run, but you have to be able to right. get a seat you at have to be able to get a seat. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think it's I, absurdly it's, cheap. I would... 20 bucks. I would do it. It seems it seems much more for hey let's go see a movie not hey let's go see you know uh, Guardians of the Galaxy two right. pay your full price ticket book you know it's it's in the th- what I hope this does is and not to call it a disruption or anything but I hope it pushes more movie theaters and chains into setting up reserve e tickets and reserve seats which is one hundred percent the standard overseas like it well, is and it's becoming the standard here v- very slowly. Because I, of the infrastructure, it's not not because of like the, it's the all because e-commerce. It's look, not I'll, because of the yeah. the physical seats in I the theaters. Know. Like AMC has the ability to do it, and they only choose to do it in some theaters. Well, they they have to have numbers and stuff on the seats, which is a very simple problem to solve. I mean, well, I say that, but somebody has numbers. to come. Lo- I mean, they have to put numbers and lights because you have to be able to see the seat numbers and stuff. Yeah, and most the lights theaters are off. don't have the lights. Anyway. The the tan for N has a ton of theaters now that have reserved seating. I think it's just as they refit the seat the theaters they're they're putting the numbers and stuff in. Yeah, 
I think they're doing the math, and I, one of the reasons they didn't want to let people reserve seats is they know they have the data. They know statistically if they if you allow people to reserve seats on a movie that's maybe not a first run movie, like a must see movie, mm-hmm. then people are less likely to buy tickets um, and commit to buying a ticket if they see that it's like fifty percent full and they don't have a. Oh, you think One so? The, yeah. I also wonder I, if it's oh, kind of like the, about that. like the iPhone stuff where they would go, like some years they'd let pre-orders and some years they didn't, and it's because they wanted to get the lines. Like they liked the the coverage of people in line to see I think, something. I don't know about that. There is there's a, there's a sense that if you don't let people reserve seats, um, then it, there's more. it's more egalitarian, right? Like you know your ticket, you can. there's just as much chance that your $10 can get you the best seat in the house as someone who bought it. Uh, right before, as long as you get there early and wait in line, you know it's it's like for concerts. Um, but I know plenty of times I have just decided, yeah, maybe I can watch this movie next week, not this week, because yeah. it's you know mostly booked in uh, in reserved seats. The fact is, the studios and the well, the theaters need to do everything they can to entice people with a better quality of experience, because right now they're competing with home. Yeah, and the, the other thing psychologically. People are totally okay, still totally okay, paying five dollars for a, a soft drink, you know, six dollars yeah. for a bucket of popcorn. You just $4 assume you're going to get candy. Reamed. That that is that blows my mind. Be, like the, that is an acceptable business model, and and culturally we are totally okay with it. Well, so, the movie price t- movie price tickets are going up. Yeah, but, and the food is still expensive, but we're okay because we're getting a a, a shared cultural experience that's still better than. You know, well, watching at home. I mean, sometimes it's nice to spend two hours outside your house and have a, your kid be quiet and loaded full of hockey. It's what fills the malls these days. You know, I don't know. My imagination about going to the theater is always better than the reality. Like whenever I'm always looking forward to it. It's not the, coke, the wrong it's, theater. It's, you're not sitting on that line. Those kids are singing that Coke song and 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 <laughs> ba da ba 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 and, and and throwing the popcorn. Exactly. <laughs> That's exactly. Yeah. yeah. And as people, you can hear you're spilling on your laptop. And you're, it's probably fine. <laughs> you hear you hear people chewing, like you hear, and you hear people talking and checking their phones, and it's just constant. It's and, the checking the phones bit. Thanks, yeah. millennials. It's that you can tell if you're sitting like it's not just millennials. It's not just millennials. It's mostly old it's, people. It's also yes, yeah. everyone in this room included. I don't check um, my phone at the fucking movie theater. I don't. No, no, not before during the trailers. People not do. The trailers. People not talk during the trailers. Like like it's not the, the movies. Oh. It's not the movies. It's the trailers. <laughs> what? It's, Next thing you're going to say, you recline your seat on the airplane. Coming attractions. I like the coming attractions. Uh, the thing that makes me the most angry about going to movie theaters yes. is after the fact and seeing with the scum of the earth, people who leave their garbage on the floor. Look, you're creating jobs. <laughs> That's You're, you're it, doing it, your it bit for... It infuriates me to no <laughs> end the amount of trash people leave in a movie theater and how, how crappy I, people feel like... Yep. They, can, they can leave that well, room. Well, they paid all that good money. Yeah. I mean, you pay $25, you should be able to take your crap in there if you want. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to be an, an outro bit. All right. Um, other big news this week. Uh, I know you're not in the market for a Tesla, but you're excited about the Tesla Model 3, Jeremy. I am as well. Aren't we all? I think. Are you still on the list, Norm? I'm still on the list. Are you still on the list, Jeremy? I am, but I'm going to back out. I just want to get my access to that uh, designer tool. We need to talk about the best way for me to take your spot on the list. Oh, because I'm a little in front of you, you think? Because you are definitely a little in front of me. Why do you just sell him him your spot? The thing is, by the time time they make these cars, they're going to be so close together. You're not that far behind me. Any any, Any bit ahead of the list. Yeah. Would, 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 Do you still have your Bitcoin loan? No. Oh, we're going to talk about this random tangent. Did you sell it? Let's talk about the, the Tesla first. Okay. The, the the fear we have with the Model Three is the user experience, the UI, because there is no like the, the Model S has that big screen yeah. in the center, seventeen inch screen, but it also has a traditional dashboard behind the steering wheel. Yeah. And in, an information. But it's also a screen, right? Yes, that is also yeah. a screen. And screens as dashboards are totally fine. Like there's there's no problem with that. Yeah, I'm fine with that. Uh, most most cars, even non-electric cars, have that these days. The Model Three has nothing, no UI, except for that screen in the middle. Really? So how, where, does it have a heads-up display or something? No. No heads-up display. How do you tell how fast you're going? You look at the screen in the yeah. middle. You have to look and down to the right? Down into the right. My, my, opinion on this, my opinion on this is that the car is clearly designed to be autonomous. And you're, you're supposed to be doing anything but looking at the road. 
And that's why that screen is there, for you to engage with the car as you need, but you can direct your entire attention to it. Like, it was designed to be autonomous. Man, that is not... We are not there yet. We're just not there yet. Yeah. And so there's this interim stage that's going to be awkward. So not, not, not only is, is there no dash, you know... How do you change the airflow in your car, in any of your cars? I mean, you, have, this is, you have a new car. You have a, you have a Bolt. I do. How do you change the airflow? Very traditional. You, you grab you the reach fins. Up, you grab the fins and you uh, direct it. Yes. Yeah. You, you, like, so this one you say, Alexa, <laughs> aim the air at the driver. <laughs> it's basically, basically that. You have to, there, is, there are no fins. What? It's one three. gigantic vent along the front. So it's like a Dyson. Yeah, it's like a Dyson. And wow. on the UI, on screen, you drag... On screen, there's a video, uh, I guess one of the early Model 3 backers and owners had uh, tweeted this, Bill Lee on, on Twitter, showed you, you press the, the fan button and then you drag on these four quadrants where you want the air to be best directed at or two spots if you want dual climating and that's where the air will be. Not a fan. Not, not that's a fine. fan Are indeed. you making puns now? That's what I do. I, so, okay, we've talked about this before in the context of cars. I don't. I have remained unconvinced. I haven't spent a lot of time driving Teslas or any time driving Teslas. <laughs> I remain unconvinced by non-tactile interfaces in a context where you need to keep your eyes on the road. Uh, 100%. Yeah. yeah. I completely agree. Uh, and, and, and I guess the point is that maybe they've designed this so you don't need to keep your eyes on the road in the future. Full, it, so full disclosure, Mini Coopers have a big console in the center. I think newer ones have one behind the wheel. Yep. But the early versions did not. It was just all, so everything was, was right in the, in the middle. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Um, so like that, th- this isn't unprecedented. And and I was thinking, you know, there are third party companies that sell heads up display things that this, you know pop up. On the windshield, yeah. so if you, if you want your speedometer that way, you could buy an attachment Navity for that. is one of them, yep. I think. But with the Mini Cooper, street. like, yeah, your speedometer was there, but all of the tactile controls for radio and AC and everything, you could reach out and feel them. Yeah. You didn't have to take your eyes off That's the road. That's exactly it. I, I'm, I am, I, I, I don't know. I drove a, I rented a, I had to drive to LA a few weeks ago, and I rented a Hyundai or something that had that other, uh, the lane guidance stuff, and found it to be maddening when you were driving. What, was how... What was it? What was the lane guidance stuff? Um, so it kept it kept you in the lines of the road. So theoretically, if you needed a second to look down at the thing, yeah. But the problem was it it didn't actually the sensors that detected when people were in your blind spots got dirty after about forty five minutes on the road. So you hmm. had to get out and wipe them off the next time you put gas in the car. So that meant that that lane checking thing would give a buzz that said, "Hey, this isn't on. You have to actually look." Every time you put the turn signal on to switch lanes, and and if the tracking got confused about where you were in the lane, it would start shaking the car wheel, um, and then would start steering you back, and you'd have to fight against it. So it was exhausting. That's weird. It was it was not it was not great. I wasn't super impressed. I mean, of course, this was not the Tesla implementation, which is probably the best in the business. But right. Anyway, <clears throat> it, it wasn't like an autopilot. It was it just a, an assistant. Well, it, it, it would keep it in the lane for you. Could you let go of the wheel? You could let go of the wheel and it would put it back in the lane and then it would start buzzing because you let go of the wheel. Hmm. There's a lot of bad UI in cars. I mean, uh, yeah. And, and a lot of it, it's, it's definitely tested because they, they have to go through a development period before they release these the UIs. But even within like one brand of car, year over year, like let's, let's use the Lexus for example, right? Um, I've rented cars from them. Uh, my t- 11-year-old one has a touchscreen. Uh-huh. And it's a it's a non it's a it's a resistive resistive touchscreen yeah. works fine for me. I touch the screen, I can I can tr- use the GPS or whatever. Uh, and then they move. Did you have you use these the ones that have the the mouse, the the puck? Yeah, the, is that the, like BMW? the BMW? does that. The BMW. Aries and then, car has yeah, that. Yeah, or it's like it's 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 like a knob. It's like a five way D pad with a knob that has haptic feedback. Yeah, and it's but it's still associated with the screen, uh-huh. and it has a little mouse cursor that you're literally dragging around. And it snaps to buttons. Oh, so so the ones that I've used, like the one in the i3, was a five way D pad that mm-hmm. had the that you could twist the knob on to, right. to scroll through things. Uh, Lexus didn't have that. That was great. They didn't have they didn't have the twist. It was just like a five way. Oh, yeah, the twist is important. That sh- that was corresponding to. Um, yeah, having to like destiny game your cursor around is bad news. While driving, yeah, totally bad news. And now they've moved to touch pads, like literally a touch pad beneath. Your stick, nope. but, but where you put your finger on, as opposed to touching the screen, because they want to raise the screen. But as an beyond. alternative to touching the screen, no. you can still you touch, the screen, touch the screen. Right? That's so unintuitive. So unintuitive. I mean, so, so here's the thing: like, if you look at companies that How are good at user experience and user design, user interface design, like 
there's probably four in the world that are actually great at it. And and like we complain about Microsoft, I complain about Android sometimes. Those guys are top top very are, are amazing gods of design compared to the people that design cars, consumer electronics, microwave ovens, all house goods, all of that stuff. Like they they're not they're 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 we're desperately in need of somebody to do human interface guidelines like Apple did with the original Macs back in the day for uh for cars like it's just not those those experiences aren't great but is this a short-term problem i mean if the tesla is designed to be a self-driving car and as elon says all cars will be within 20 years i think he's probably right then what's the point i mean i for one welcome the self-driving future yeah this is a short-term problem even if you know it doesn't get solved we're in that weird interim period where the cars are transitioning over and Dumb, and they have to make these design conceits or find design solutions to design problems that don't exist. Yeah, not not a fan. Uh, a little worried about that. Um, to go back to your tangent, yes, I did sell my Bitcoin. I'm sorry. I, How I, are you feeling about that? Not great. He did great. I made four hundred bucks. That's 450 okay. Bucks. What would you have made if you'd kept it now? Oh boy, three thousand <laughs> and change. And change. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 600 bucks. No, yeah. probably 4,000. I would have gotten Bitcoin cash too, which it also is hovering yeah. about 400 bucks. Yeah. Yeah. Would have repaired my, would enough to money to repair my car or, or put a down payment on a new one. Yeah. Sorry. I didn't realize it was quite that much or I wouldn't have brought it up. It was a lot of money. Wow. It, 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 I didn't lose any money. That's didn't, true. Didn't lose I any mean, money. It looked like you were going to lose it all for a little bit there. Yeah. I, at some point, I was seriously thinking about trading a uh, new egg, had an offer, sell your Bitcoin for a, get, and get a PS4. That's a pretty good deal. That was a good deal when Bitcoin was under 300 bucks. Yeah. And I'm, I'm sure they're yeah. new eggs really happy with all these Bitcoins. They, I they thought got. I was going to have to expense the money that I gave you to buy your Bitcoin at one point. Oh, I gave wow. you money back. You eventually. I gave you, I gave you get cash almost immediately back. Yeah, it took a while. No, you got, you got it Did back. Did he give you a percentage cut? No. Oh. You no. should have kept that. You should have kept part of that Bitcoin. I didn't I didn't take an investment share. Okay. No. <laughs> I, just, I just loaned money. Yeah. Um, so. I did drink a lot of beer, though. There was a lot of beer that weekend. Uh, so consumer reports, um, do you guys still use consumer reports? Or no. do you guys use wire cutter? Wire cutter. Wire cutter. What's I think, consumer I reports think, again? Well, before the wire cutter, they were the most trusted um, technology and, and consumer report or review site. Um, I think so, the mass market still considers them. Yeah, totally. Such. They, they still have a, 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 good repre- a good reputation, and I think a lot of companies still hold their, their recommendations in high regard. My yeah. grandfather always used them when, when he needed to buy a washing machine. So they recently removed a recommended rating for Microsoft Surface laptops and tablets. Is that um, the book or the pro or both? See, that's where that some of the ambiguity comes in. It's across all of the surf to- Surface laptops and tablets. RT? Uh, uh, um, not RT. In the okay. last few generations. Okay. Uh, people, ones you can buy today in stores. Okay. Uh, because they did a survey, and of the 90,000 users they surveyed, uh, 25% of the users, which is a significant amount, reported issues with reliability freezing what? and shutdowns within the first couple of I think that's years just of Windows years. 10 isn't it that's <laughs> I think that's part of it that's too yeah bad. so Microsoft so, clearly does not agree with us consumer reports did this survey yeah they do well, a lot of surveys that's cool. they do, they do t- like that's the thing that Wirecutter doesn't do the consumer reports does mm. is they survey tens of thousands of people who buy stuff so uh, Microsoft issued a statement, and then they also t- released an internal memo that um, that Whoa. Paul Thoreau was able to get a hold of, and it did. Uh, I think it acknowledged they had some quality issues initially with the launch of the Surface Book and Surface Pro Four, and I think anyone who's owned a Surface Book, first generation Surface Book, noticed that over time, like they had some driver issues with the detachment of the lid and the I mean, Windows keyboard. 10 just in general has problems when you disconnect a GPU. And, but here's the problem. Guess who makes Windows 10? Also Microsoft. I mean, my they make the hardware, they make the hardware. Theoretically, the, the people that make, if, if, they, if the whole purpose of Surface is to be the best hardware to represent their software, uh, it they should work seamlessly. Yeah, they can't complain that somebody used a shitty network stack or a network, network uh, chip or something like that with, with the machine that they make. Uh, they also uh, blame uh, Intel, and some of the issues uh, perhaps were with the Skylake and adopting those chips and the drivers, and Windows 10 um, working perfectly with that. But it, that's not, I don't think that was, that was really it. I mean, Skylake and then the previous the, the processors, they're all similar enough. If the drivers work in the past chips, they should have worked with these chips. Um, 
Yeah, I mean, at some point, if you make the hardware and you make the software, you have to say, look, we fucked this up. Or or, they, or alternately, they could say this is a faulty survey and it, it, it leans too heavily on certain customers. Who, well, you know, whatever. there's a lag. I think the problem is a lag because Microsoft is saying that it's all fixed. Of course they're saying so it's all fixed. They're saying that over – I mean, I think they have to be really – smart about how they message that right like if they're going to acknowledge that the people had pre- issues then they're acknowledging that they launched with faulty products um uh, but then they're also doubling down the fact that things are fixed and i think for a lot of users who browse the forums some people still have issues with uh these computers going to sleep um just like unpredictable behavior i, I mean look the unpredictable behavior describes my experience with windows 10 right i i use it every day it's fine but some, I always turn off my laptops now when I put them in a bag instead of putting them to sleep because I don't like to wake up to the 90-degree laptop and a dead battery, right? Or 150-degree laptop and a dead battery. Yeah, and just anecdotally, the, the, the issues I've had, like I think no one likes having updates – Surprise updates on your on your desktop machine, especially if you run your desktop machine overnight, well, and and you wake up the next morning and it's doing uh it's it's, it's rebooted. Don't worry, your data is okay. It's safe. Yeah, um, I think also some of the design because they're putting chips that yes they run at low power, low wattage, but they can ramp up. A yeah. lot of that heat management is put behind the screens. They're putting a lot of this stuff, especially in the Surface Books, where it's these Core i7s on a big screen on a really thin computer, um, and the, the keyboard's really just the battery. The heat issues can cause these computers to lock up, and I've definitely had the mouse lock up and the touchscreen lock up from time to time. I, I've had, even on a, like a Razer Blade, I've had problems when you plug in the external GPU. If you un- Sometimes when you unplug it, it just blue screens the whole machine for no apparent reason, right? It's like Windows is twitchy about about hardware being re- like key components being removed and, and added on the fly. So like I, I don't I don't doubt any of this. I think that this is the experience of of modern Windows, unfortunately. I also don't think the consumer reports were were completely transparent about the way they conducted the surveys. Ninety thousand users of like I don't think there are ninety thousand users of Surface Pro five that you can get access to unless you are Microsoft at any time. So it's like they need to delineate between which of the users, what what machines they had, if if they wanted to say to blanket say not recommend this brand of laptop as a whole. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I wouldn't recommend anyone buying like a two year old laptop and using old drivers, right? You'd want to buy the newest one, use the latest drivers, or last year's laptop and use the latest drivers. But one of the things that one of the things and and a lot of like the Surface Book and the Surface Pro Four had had high early returns because they had some problems. Right out of the gate, I I think, and I think there's that's also a marketing issue. I think w- returns could also be due to mismatched expectations. You sell a product as a tablet, mm-hmm. and what you're getting is a laptop that you have to buy an optional keyboard for. Of course, people are going to be a little disappointed. But yeah. if you sell it as the thing it actually is good for, then yeah, you're not buying an maybe, iPad. Maybe works itself out. Will you have a smart home? I do. My home is smart. Except you have avoided the smart lock. Am I correct? I do not like the smart lock because of this reason. <laughs> Alexa, unlock the front door. What's wrong with that? That sounds very convenient. Uh, my front door and my Alexa are too close to each other to use that safely. Oh, I see. Yeah. Well, Because you can stand outside the door and say, Alexa, unlock my front door, and your front door will unlock. If you were to choose a smart lock, you might have gone with a uh, smart lock by a company named um, Lockstate. Um, oh, oh, old lock state. Yeah. yeah. No, that they're you know they're highly recommended. Yeah. In fact, um, I Air, think Airbnb it, recommends Airbnb them. Airbnb right? does yeah. in fact recommend them. Uh, well, last week they um, launched the like we're talking about with Windows, an auto update for their lock system. Oh. Only they sent the wrong version. Just to, what I need. They sent, locks my house to auto update. They, they, yeah, exactly. They sent the seven thousand series update to the six thousand series. You know what you should send the story to? That that Internet of Shit Twitter account. Well, I bet that guy is all over this. Unfortunately, that bricked the connection to the internet. Oh. And so uh, what a lot of people, especially on Airbnb, were using these locks for was to assign one-time passcodes to you know current residents so Oops. that they could get in the house. Unfortunately, with the internet connection broken, that was impossible. Not so much, huh? So the physical key still works. Yeah, absolutely. No, yeah. I mean, as as it always would. But, yeah. And it's not as bad as like you know publishing your code to the internet, but it was a bad bad news story, for, bad for, news day. For the record, Microsoft did a much better with the creators update about forcing people to upgrade immediately. Because hmm. like I just installed the creators update on my last machine last week, and it wasn't nagging me. It just said, "Hey, by the way, we have this. It's available for you if you want it." Yeah, um, that's the way it should be. 
I mm-hmm. think. Yeah, I think all those that they should be. Like, I don't. I don't. So what are they doing to fix these locks? Do you well, have you to have send two it options. back, or can you like plug it into a micro USB thing or something? No, that would be great. Oh boy. No, you have two options. One, you can send your lock back. That which does, that's not great. I don't want locks with micro USB ports on them. It, for the record, well, if it's on the inside, it's okay. <laughs> it leaves your door, you know, without a lock on it. That seems. It, that seems like it might. I mean, it seems a little. I don't want to judge here. <laughs> so, or you can wait for them to send you a new lock. And Which then you, you swap them the out. The fact they weren't overnighting locks to people. Yeah. Or getting them codes that they could download and buy one immediately for free from Best Buy can or you, can Target. You, can you just Martian that and like type in the new source code, like a micro code on the keypad and, and like just. Oh, like in binary? Just like binary. Just one one zero zero one zero one 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 and who, Kai, who, well, how did this happen? Kids, this is why you do, this is why if you have a massive company, if you have a company that's selling hardware like this, then you don't stage your updates and test them on exactly. real machines, then this is going to happen to you and it will destroy your company. Like I, that I, sucks. I, we've but, all worked in tech at, at some level. I, I mean, I've made mistakes that have, could have been horrible, always staged, but there's always like a, a firewall that gets passed through but, and yeah. It's too bad. If it works, right I mean, look, sometimes you do stuff and it doesn't work on the staging server. And I'm sure they'll do a postmortem that explains exactly why, the, how they fucked this up. But, but like the vast majority of times that we've made mistakes that would have destroyed us, we caught them on the staging server. Yeah. Um, okay. We are, it's August 17th. We're probably one month away from the announcement of a, a new iPhone is, is my expectation. Just, just three uh, weeks, keep, maybe. I, everyone keeps talking about this iPhone 8. You know, there are people uh, who no build uh, a version of the phone based on what they think. Like You can buy Is it on a, Thingiverse? N- n- uh, they actually have like milled yeah, parts. Like, like, like case like nice like, It looks really, really nice Like it's in terms of a mock-up. This is much fun. We used to use the 3D print like yeah, just yeah. for size, see mm-hmm. if it fits in your pocket. Yeah. I think that's still a great idea. Uh, but like they have now like it like just to see the steel exterior and the band or whatever, but no one knows how the the fingerprints gonna suffer. It's gonna work with this new screen. Um, but the uh, the event that they're gonna have in September, because we all expect an event, is gonna be more, I think, than about just a new iPhone. I mean, oh. we'll probably talk about HomePod, um, and they may even talk about content. This is the big question: Is Apple TV how is it still a hobby for them, or is this a real business? For I them? thought it's not a hobby now that there's apps on it, right? I think it's still a hobby. So I think the apps were stopgap solution for them because it was a failed measure for them to control the content. Hmm. And we talked about how like if, if they had bought Netflix back when Netflix was cheap, and, yeah. and they probably would have run it differently, um, run the content deals differently. But that's kind of that's the position they probably wanted to be in. I'd like them to buy Netflix and put Dre in charge. Or um, Jimmy Ivey. Jimmy, Jimmy Ivey. Ivey. Dude, That's and right. by the way, I watched that whole four-part documentary about them. On HBO? The Defiant Ones. It's good. I watched it on the train. It's great. Like that, I I had no idea about Jimmy Ivey, and I now think he should be the next uh, CEO of Apple. What do you? What do you? Wow. What do you, what do you watch? Uh, what, what What did you do with your free time? Did you play some games? You watch some movies? <laughs> you watch some documentaries? Yeah, that's TV. Basically beat. it. That's basically it. Yeah. Take the switch. There's a game called Rider on on iPhone that I played a hell of a lot of. Okay. A little light cycle game. That sounds good. So for a company that has over two hundred and fifty billion in cash, not in stock, just in cash, a lot of billion, that's yeah. a, lot that's of a, lot, a lot of zeros, mm-hmm. a lot of zeros, a lot of It looks like uh, from some reports they're going to spend uh, about a, one two hundred and fiftieth of that, a billion, <laughs> on some original content that they might distribute on uh, a, their Apple TV. That's amazing. Presumably, that's money that they'll get back when they start a subscription service or start selling stuff. That I think subscription is what I mean. There are a lot of subscription models out there, yeah. and it's maybe one of the reasons that iTunes kind of sucks because they don't want people to buy things out of the cart anymore. They want people to not own the content and uh, just buy and just rent licenses. Well, they're uh, bundled, month to month. They bundle their current. They do two shows already, right? This uh, singing, uh, the ca- app, karaoke and cars, carpool karaoke. Yeah, that's James Planet Marsden. of the Apes and Planet of the Apes, and they're both bundled. <laughs> Planet of the Apes. The apps. It's <laughs> different. Right. They're both bundled with uh, with Apple Music, so I assume right. that. What everything going forward uh, is going to be the same thing. So this is their uh, the reverse Amazon move. Wait, Amazon so Amazon got you your Prime subscription, right? You you they got you in with two day shipping, and then with they start raising the price for that, and then they snuck in uh, your uh, your streaming music, your Amazon Music. Uh, they snuck in your Amazon Prime Video uh, as a way to compete with Netflix, which charge you month to month, and they are going to probably increase their prices as well um, in the near future. What 
with Apple is the other way. Get you with music because they have a, the the quote unquote best music solution that they believe, and then mm-hmm. start feeding in video, and then feeding in. I mean, they also have a upgrade program for phones, right? People are now leasing their phones essentially from Apple. Well, no, that's all run through a third party bank. It's it's not through with care. It's they are not the, doing the financing. Ah. So another, I, I, Citizens United or something like that. It's a it's a well, it's not Citizens United. That's Citizens. I can't remember what it is, but but they they that's all external. I I wonder if they might do it the other way. What if they provide create some original content and then give you like X amount of credits to spend in the iTunes movie and TV store every month? Right, like you get one series a month or something. Yeah, what's the business model? How I I mean, like they could completely they could completely flip it. They have they have both sides of the of the channel, potentially. Is it a hardware play? Only people with Apple TV can can watch this stuff. No, because people want to watch on the phones and movies. All this works like Netflix and Hulu and all that stuff works because I can watch my so phone. So it's hardware room. locked, like Safari on iPhones. Yeah, it's the ecosystem locked. I assume. Well, no, because Apple Music's on Android. There's an Apple Music app for Android. And you could watch. Could you watch like it's like streaming Apple Keynotes uh, with Safari on Windows. But uh, you if can now do that on Edge. Mm. If they're gonna make a platform. For 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 so content, they're going to make base. it open for everybody. So it has to be subscription. I think it's, I think it's Apple Music. I'm. You think it's Apple Music, and they just added another ten bucks to it, and you get TV too, or not? And they just want like with Billion Prime, they just keep putting stuff money in. To it's, put in there. it's not not. It's like a sixth of what Netflix is going to spend it's this a million year. People but at most $10 of Netflix, a month what they dorm. do is uh, most of that six billion for content is in licensing. Not it's, anymore. It's, yeah, it is. It's really? Still, yeah. Yeah, there's they do recently, so much original content now. Yes, but the the interview that uh, Variety did with Ted, uh, I forget his last name, Kaczynski. No, um, the the content, the head of content at uh, at Netflix. Mm-hmm. Okay, uh, he said that. So you know, Ted uh, Sarandos, um, like they they are going to spend seven billion, I think, next year mm-hmm. on content. They did six billion this year, and there are reports that they are in debt twenty billion. But most of that is in um, licensing obligations that they've already signed deals for in the next couple oh, of years. Okay. Uh, still, more than half of that seven billion is for licensing. Okay, that's a lot of billions. Well, it's still, but still, they're, they're I mean, even, yeah. they're, they're still, still spending a lot multi of billions. They're still original content, but they've yeah. been doing it for forever, right? right. They have the, the partnership. They've been signing creators. They bought a comic book company, um, so but they have an infrastructure built in. They also crank content way faster than most traditional networks. Like yep. they'll do two seasons of a thing a year if it's doing well for them. Like, what is HBO's content budget? A couple billion dollars, probably. I just know that they've been um, not counting license, reported so. to spend ten million an episode on Game of Thrones. Yeah, and that's their most expensive show. I would guess so. Uh, I, do I bet episodes, Westworld's more six, expensive now. Well, let's let's say two. Uh, let, let's do some napkin math, right? Yeah. Like if they do ten million episode for Netflix or for uh, Game, Game of, of Thrones, Thrones and Westworld, and let's say they're at, at its peak ten that's episode a, each. That's a fifth of a billion dollars. That's two hundred million. Yeah, but they don't do ten of those shows a year. They do. Maybe roughly. They do a there. lot of other. I mean, they pay for those all those comedy, they comedy specials. specials. They pay not, not, for not hundreds of millions. But they have like Jerry Seinfeld and Louis C.K. and stuff like that. That's, That's not cheap. Netflix now. Oh really? Netflix paid fifty million. Oops. For that stuff. Well, there you go. So now yeah. we know what that costs. Yep. Uh, and that was on the very, very, I mean, very that, high that's, end. I mean, yeah. If you want to steal them. But my point is that if Apple's just saying that they want to spend a billion dollars, they want to make ten hundred million dollar shows, ten House of Cards, ten Game of Thrones shows. You can't just flip a switch and say. We're gonna have ten well, of these there's shows. Not, there's not that much capacity in the world to make those kinds or of shows. Or creative, creative. I yeah. mean, like uh, creative capacity, like production capacity. I mean, yeah, like the, like just in you know, getting only cru- so many Icelands. getting crews and VFXs and costumes and all that stuff built for those kinds of big period shows is really expensive, um, and and time consuming. I I hey, don't. Apple, I mean, there's a want, reason you want to buy a podcast. <laughs> there's a, look. We do two weeks, two hours of content a week. This is it's good stuff. Um, with I, I don't think. There's there's a lot of concern from people that I know that the TV bubble the TV is a bubble right now. Peak TV that that we are producing way much more really high quality TV than it's possible for people to watch. Supply and demand will fix that. I, I yeah, and in fixing that, it'll wipe out entire networks probably. Um, which is I mean that's the way things go, but we could see another crash and then the rise of the cheap reality TV will come back and we'll we'll be back right back in two thousand one again. Well, maybe they should invest in uh, platforms for things that are not just video, maybe audio. Uh, SoundCloud, um, between recording last week, SoundCloud died and then came back. 
SoundCloud what? died. I didn't hear about that. Well, they, they, they were going to go. They were on their last legs. They did not have the funding to continue. And um, hmm. they were saved at the last minute um, with a huge uh, investment of $170 million. Um, and they will, they will continue operating. So that basically you're saying a Game of Thrones and three quarters of a Westworld saved SoundCloud. Yes. Yeah. Yes. To go back to that, that estimate of how much that stuff so, costs. Yeah. Um, it's interesting. Why is it necessary for SoundCloud to survive? I think it's one of those services that people take for granted now. A, I mean, lot, a, lot, a lot of podcasts are hosted on SoundCloud. Yeah. A lot of uh, indie music comes up on SoundCloud. No, I'm not saying it was a bad service. It was beautiful. I love their waveform. Of, you can yeah. see things. I love the comment system. I just wonder, I wonder if it's kind of like the audio industry where it's like, well, I mean, if, na- if it was naturally not going to make it, why? But it became it was a YouTube for audio. It was an easy way for people to upload audio right. and share yeah. it. Like YouTube wouldn't still exist if Google hadn't bought it when Google bought YouTube because yeah, it was yeah, unsustainable. Yeah. But they they did find a way to monetize it. I wonder if, if SoundCloud will figure that out. That's what this investment's about. I think well, it's and, about figuring out. They did a subscription model, and they got a new CEO along with the investment. Right, the new CEO is from Vimeo, I think. Uh, but yeah, they already had laid off forty percent of his workforce last last month because they were um, spending too much money and not sustainable. I mean, it's it's the it's the case with a lot of startups, right? They offer free services, and if you can't find the business model that's going to work, um, but you build the user base, that user base isn't necessarily going to sustain it because sometimes people aren't willing to pay. Well, so Snapchat's in a similar situation. They're they're spending a ton of money right now. How many Snapchat spectacles do you think they sold? Forty five thousand. About forty three thousand. Damn. Yeah. That's pretty close. Um, they, uh, I think I probably saw a headline last week and it popped up in the back of my mind. They, they, they basically, like they're spending a ton of money to acquire users and they're not acquiring users anymore. So they're in a similar, like they're probably still making money on the users exist. But with a lot of these services, if, especially if you're venture funded, if you aren't continuing to grow your user base at a, at a phenomenal rate, you're, you've got problems. Which is ridiculous because it's, I think it's more important to make money I mean, I'm, I'm not an entrepreneur, but I don't know, like, from VC's perspective, is it about just getting free users signing up, or is it about actually active users and people paying users? Well, okay, so there's always attrition in terms of users, like, like the amount of time, uh, uh, the new users coming in versus the old users coming out. You always want to have more new users coming in than you have old users going out, right? But um, y- you... Like you don't want to spend a ton of money to capture those new users, and you don't want to because because there's a total amount of money you're going to be able to extract from them either in terms of personal purchases or advertising revenue or whatever. And if the amount of money you're spending to acquire users is more than the amount of money that you're going to get out of that user, then you, you're not. That's not good. That's not good for your business. So it's a weird, it's a like it's a weird way to run a business though, right? Like this is this is the modern so post social networking. Kind of, kind of big service, big free service, and and it's 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 challenging. Um, speaking of Snapchat, um, I'm assuming you guys are big Snapchat users. Man, I snap all day, every day. So many, so I many filters. All I got all those PUBG snaps. Faces. We do a lot of pick, the filters are popular with my kids. Yeah, kid I mean, putting some rabbit ears or yeah, kitten the, ears the, on your stick face. Stick your tongue out. The pu- the puppy tongue comes out. It's, it's good computer. Game it, of Thrones, it's, Ice it's Walker. Tr- she really honestly, liked that one. Training. That was great. The, the algorithms to better do facial recognition yeah. and to, to better um, to, to do computer vision. Uh, Snapchat unveiled a new feature um, this past weekend uh, with, in, to coincide with the Outside Lands music festival that's happening in San Francisco. It's a feature called CrowdSurf. And I thought it was interesting because it reminded me of the, the Photosynth uh, software that Microsoft experimented oh, in yeah. way back, like over 10 years ago. Uh, that was based on, I think, Sea Dragon was the name of the, uh, the the technology. You're talking about when they could take a bunch of pictures taken randomly by different people of the same area and, and create a point cloud. Sort of create a, a cloud, a 3D space. Yes. They, they did it with Obama's, one of Obama's inaugurations, I think. It was think. basically a photogrammetry, yeah. um, crowdsourced photogrammetry, right? Bef- back before computing was really cheap. Tons and tons of uh, different cameras, that worked with different cameras from different perspectives and could kind of figure it out. Uh, well, what uh, Snapchat has, because people are Snapchatting all the time, especially at live events where people are recording like very similar things, such as like a musician on stage, they're taking that same tech to video by synchronizing the audio. So they're taking the audio forms, matching them up. What? And then what they're doing is they're allowing wow. you to play back and switch in real time between different video feeds. Wow. So it's like a huge polyphonic audio like capture 
Wow, that's really bizarre. So it's a, the I, I guess there was a string that syncs up all the the Snapchat feeds uh, from that that sequence, and as long as it can fill up all the holes, if someone's one person records the entire time, that's great. Oh. But then you can switch between the different views. That's that is really cool. Actually, really cool. Yeah. And you, I assume you get the audio from each of the different views. Yes. But which was hopefully temporarily they're synced up, but the quality may not be the same. Yeah, exactly. Because some people might be yelling in front of the camera. They might be you might hear ambient, but it's. So, it's a way of navigating space. There, I was going to say it's a live version of that uh, Beastie Boys thing exactly that they shot where they put the they just hit a bunch of video cameras, like cheap camcorders, in the venue. They didn't hide them. They gave them to, to people. They gave them to people they, in the they line? They bought them from Best Buy, and okay. they handed them out, and they shot the show randomly from different perspectives. Oh, man. And then they returned them to Best Buy. Yeah. <laughs> the cameras? Yeah. Nice. Well, but the people gave him the tapes, and yeah, yeah. they, and then it's a documentary called "Yo, I, I freaking shot that" or something. Yeah, good, good memory. Yeah, and there's a lot of metadata here. It's right? a good like, MCA like, idea. When people are using Snapchat, one, you already have the timestamp in the app, the and app the geo too, right? Location, the time, and now you have the audio, which can help sync things up perfectly. Uh, Do you think they're cheating and using real audio, like clean audio off the board? So th- this is not going to be for every – you can't just like – the three of us can't just record three three different yeah. perspectives of one thing. It's going to be only used right now for events, like, like concert concerts. events, outdoor concerts, things like speeches, things where people – they know, one, a lot of Snapchat users, two, less people are using the Snapchat stories. And it's to encourage people to, one, record more and, two, then to view it back on their phones within that app. They've got the GPS data, too, so well, they can see that, who's I, near each other. I wonder if they have beacons set up, too, so they know exactly where. I don't think they need it. Probably not. I mean, I think That's really interesting. So what's the deal? Like, Do you just hit play on a prefab video, or do you actually have control over what perspectives you're looking at? That's the thing. I think the, the uh, in the app, you could press the button to switch between perspectives. That's pretty neat. Yeah. It's really cool. Yeah. So open AI. Yeah. Let's go back to the international. Yeah, back to the internet. It's my favorite game, Dota 2. Have, have you ever played it? Once. <laughs> okay. Um, so open, Didn't stick. You know what open AI is? Uh, it's art- artificial intelligence that's right. platform that's open source. More or less. Ish. It's Elon Musk's open AI venture. Okay. And it's it's a small group. It's like 10 people. Uh, it doesn't but, have a cool name like the Boring Company or something like that? No, it's different. Oh. Uh, but it is, uh, you know, Elon's very wary of, of AI or the theory of AI. And he's yeah. concerned that it's going to take over the world. And he's, he's said, you know, AI is something we all need to be aware of and think deeply about. And my AI company will share all of our information with you. And that's why it's called OpenAI. Well, one of their projects that they've worked on is um, is a AI for Dota. It's the easiest way to kill all the humans. Dota 2. So they're, 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 Dota they, two. In fact, their AI has now killed probably uh, more humans than uh, AlphaGo. We're the creeps, is what you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> they, they took... Their open AI to the uh, championship, the, the international. international to the international. What like a, a week ago, and they played. The, they made a big event out of it. Where like this the, is when they played crispy. No, one, not crispy. Uh, dandy, uh, dandy. D- yeah, so d- dandy. Dandy came out. Came out in a boxing outfit. I think it's dandy. The, the dandy, dandy, right? Yeah. Dandy, and uh, the crowd went wild. And then they they said, it's, very, it's a crowd favorite Dota player. And this is that normally Dota is five v five. This is a one v one match. So Which it's kind of unique. Breaks the absolutely. The, the no, no, we can't have five dendies. No, but, but stick stick with it for a second because it's baby steps, right? So it's one v one. It's a completely different game. And they also they turn off all these options that Dota players usually play with. Oh, that's not even Dota. It, it's, it's it's not an it's, exhibition it's, match. It's, this is like when Gary Kasparov played the computer. It's like you couldn't use special abilities. You couldn't. You that's, can use it's not right because like that was pure chess. You could exhibition. Anything goes. Exhibition. Early these, access. The, the rules were heavily favored to the limit to yes. limitations of absolutely. the AI system. Absolutely. So yeah, this is not like the AI can do anything anything uh, but they uh the ai won two games in a row de- de- decisively decisively do you think and, and everyone was stunned because uh, all the bots that ship with the game are you know Bad. incompetent yeah and well, well to be fair he even said on stage he's lost the bots before like i think he was being modest oh. i mean because everyone else that it tested with they all basically said yeah of course bots i might play with a bot to warm up but it's not a you know it's not a challenge right um, but it was it was interesting because the, they said that then they brought out the two of the developers and uh, they said that it taught itself to play. They didn't teach it the rules. They just threw it in the game and they just had played games against itself for thousands of thousands of cycles. Lifetime. They said Life lifetimes. Cycles. They said lifetimes. So every I, lifetime is a game. It seems to me that they uh-huh. have the ability to speed up the game. 
Because there's no right. way that you can get a lifetime, and what they ended two up weeks, saying yeah. was well, two but, weeks. But I mean, there's no reason the game's just math. It, like that yeah. is, a, it's, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so, but they said within uh, like an hour or a, not not long, it could beat the in-game bots all on its own just by learning wow. how to play. But then it took two weeks before it could actually beat a player. Highlander, that one do of you, the pro players. Do you think? Do you think that Elon, when he sets up these AI machines, like he has mandated that there's a guillotine on the power so they can just cut it at any moment? Wouldn't surprise me. The guy sounds pretty paranoid. Uh, like got AI specifically. In, in, a, good, he's in funding. a good way. You got to put a fire axe by all your AI AI rigs. That's yeah. what I say. I, I don't deny that it was impressive in terms of the way it learned mm-hmm. machine learning. Yeah. But the way it was presented was grossly over glamorized and and blew out of proportion. The significance of the yeah. Dota playing abilities. Did Did you see the thing that the oncologist wrote last week about the Watson, the IBM Watson for cancer ads? No. So basically, a, a an oncologist. It's 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 the same situation where it's presented in a really weird way. They, there are ads that talk about using Watson to diagnose different kinds of cancer and hmm. and stuff like that, and they're presented in a way that is not realistic for today's uses of that technology. So the oncologist has at the, those hospitals have people coming to them saying, Hey, can this, can this computer help me get better? And it puts them in an awful position because you know, this, these ads give people hope. It's something that they're all familiar with. And, and it's, it's the work that they're doing with the computers is, is years off is my understanding. So yeah, that's dangerous territory. Yeah. Not good. But beating people at Dota too. I mean, I'm fine with that. Big thumbs up. I think any any look. Can you make can you make a bot that makes it a, makes you able to play Dota two without somebody yelling at you for feeding? <laughs> yeah, That's exactly, what I want to know. Exactly. Yeah, they said by next year they plan to have five v five working. Hopefully, they can re- you know remove those other checks too. When it when it beat him, did it call him a fucking noob and told him to <laughs> fuck off no. and die See, or never play again? Next year. Okay. It'll learn itself to do that <laughs> right. after just another couple of weeks of scraping the internet. I mean, I have to yeah. imagine if it plays enough games with people, eventually it'll learn all sorts of interesting language. It was uh, cool. I mean, it's not unlike AlphaGo. It's not like very clear, linear. Not to, I don't mean to belittle AlphaGo in any way, shape, or form. But yeah, there's just garbage a lot, Go there's, computer. There's just a lot of like analog weird stuff about the actual live real-time aspect of Dota 2. Like you cre- you keep your creeps behind you. In, yeah. a, in a way that didn't seem like it was designed to be that way. Like it, players just learned to do this. Is it interfacing with a mouse and keyboard? Or does it have like creeps. an API level interface no, no, to the it's, game? It, it, there, there is no human avatar. There is no robot avatar. Right, right, the mouse right. keyboard is directly tied into the game. But it, but presumably it's like plugged into a USB to USB yeah. thing and it's it's mimicking the mouse and keyboard interface. I, I don't oh, know. You know, I don't know. No, I think it's coded in, into that version. It has API version. access. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's a special version. Of Dota. Yeah. 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 Huh. Interesting. Uh, well, I don't know when the last time you followed Intel CPU news is. Um, I, it's something about a lake. Let's let, let's see if you could. Uh, let's Haswell go, go, E. Let, let's go back and Broad see if you lake. can name name all the Intel chipsets you remember, the core chipsets. So oh, with the core oh, I, um, Let's start with Nehalem. Nehalem, uh, Broadwell, Sandy Bridge, was Sandy first. Bridge Ivy Bridge, did, yeah, the, Sandy Bridge, Ivy Bridge, Broadwell, good. Haswell, Haswell, before. Broadwell, Sky Lake. Very good. Ice and Lake? At, nope, we're at KB Lake now. KB, KB Lake, Lake is seventh generation. KB Lake. Seven generations. They're just making up words now. Well, it's all lakes now. Sky Lake. I liked it better when it was then Wells. Then KB Lake. Right. And Sky Lake, KB Lake, uh, both 14 nanometer. Okay. Down to 14, Moore's Law is kind of slowed down. We're not doing like... Um, yeah, we're we, x-ray crystallography or something now. Lithography. Yeah, reductions. 10 nanometers the next one. Uh, Cannon Lake. Cannon is, Lake? I'm sorry. Coffee Lake is the next one. K-O-F-Y? Coffee, I like uh, coffee. I like their coffee. Coffee Lake. Like their Saturday morning monster also show. Also, fourteen nanometers dance party. First ten nanometer will be Cannon Lake, and then Ice Lake. It's going to be like six Lake uh, processors. Are, those, are they still doing ticks and talks? They're like three things. What's the thing after a talk? A There's tack? three things. Tick tock tack. Tick tock tack. I think it's three per tick tock toe. Three for die size. Yeah, tack three for process size. <laughs> Yeah. I don't even know anymore. Jeremy's already brought out there. Jeremy uh, had to get Agile out. <laughs> this is, this is also off the rails. <laughs> yeah. Uh, hey, but, I'm so glad to be back, guys. Uh, Ice Lake is the name is going to be coming out in two years after uh, both uh, Cannon Lake and Coffee Lake. Coffee Lake is the one that's expected to come out this year, end of this year, and then at CES. Um, and it's, it's going to be aggressive, 10, 10 nanometers. Uh, although Damn. it's all about cores now, right? Yeah. You, yeah. you want to get you want to get your 18 core CPU for a thousand bucks. Oh. Still, that 10 nanometers is pretty amazing. Yeah. Um, 
It's and very then, small. I know. Uh, a couple last things in tech. Uh, anyone here use Google Home? Nope. Kishore. Kishore uses Google Home. Now you can soon soon he'll be able to make phone calls with Google Home. Only it only shows a phone number if you use Google Fi or Google Voice. Though. That's right. It would be unlisted if you and it's only one directional phone call. You can't receive the same call that way. I don't. There's no. You just make outgoing calls. That's this, the first per, uh, digital assistant you can make regular phone calls with, right? You regular can't, phone calls. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 is just digital assistant the 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 name of this category? I don't know. I call it that. What do you call it? Oh, you know, Amazon Echo. I just called an Alexa. Yeah. Digital, digital, yeah, digital assistant. Okay. Um, yeah. Cortana I, I can't make like phone calls. I, Cortana can make Skype calls. I mean, I get so many spam calls now from people in my same exchange that I like. I would have complained about this being an addition to spam calls, but I don't think it's going to make any difference. What's just, up with the Pixel Two? I like my Pixel One. Yeah. So uh, apparently, the Pixel Two HTC did uh, filing with the FCC. And uh, it may be the Pixel 2 revealed. So, really? Um, it was supposed to be, people thought it was going to be manufactured by LG uh, based on some some pictures that had come out. Or but maybe it, Huawei, right? Was one of the other rumors? Mm-hmm. But now it looks like it's going to be uh, an HTC uh, phone running Android 8.0.1. Is that orangutan? Uh, o? N? Nougat, nougat was past, last year. We're past Nougat, so O. I don't know what Oreo. 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 Is it really Oreo? They did Kit Kat, so I guess nothing's off the table. Yeah, no, it's it's Android. It's Oreo. Or no, it's it's un, un, TBD. TBD. It's it might be Oreo. Oh, Orangina. Oh, oh. Orange juice. Do you guys orange think sherbet? we just cover phones out of habit? Because ten years ago they were drop dead amazing, like the really greatest important. thing ever. Yeah. And now we just cover them because uh, I don't cover them at all anymore. <laughs> just gonna feel like we <laughs> it's have been to. A really nice change yeah, in my know, life. It's about the technologies they're putting in their phones and how they may apply elsewhere. So like things like AR Kit. Yeah. I think are super interesting. <laughs> yep. Um, but the phones themselves, the the, the the formats are pretty locked in, and the the upgrades to the OS is incremental. I I do a talk sometimes about. Um, about how if you look at what like there's something interesting about the these devices that they're making uh, 200 300 million of a year in many cases which basically says hey if they're putting a new piece of hardware in one of these phones and it's something that didn't exist before was expensive before and when I say expensive I mean a buck or two buck two three dollars a chip maybe even 20 cents a chip when you when you look at like what happens when the economies of scale kick in on a phone level, then all of a sudden you can like look three years in the future and see like if you were looking in 2008 when they started adding accelerometers to the iPhone and gyroscopes to the iPhone with the iPhone 4, you, you suddenly realize, oh, right, this is going to open up a whole world of possibilities in, in, in real space with drone controllers and stuff like that. Because yeah. like, like the DJI and the 3D robotics and all the rise of drones wouldn't have happened if it weren't for cheap silicon-based accelerometers, gyroscopes, and compasses. Yeah, not to mention VR headsets. Yeah, VR headsets are the same thing. Um, and, and 3D printers are came from came from routers, right? You know, millions and millions of routers are sold a year, and those are all driven by these low cost arm controllers and and stuff like that. It's it's like you can, like that's why phones are interesting at this point. I just I don't see too much new hardware being implemented. Well, phones. they're putting like barometric pressure sensors and stuff like that in real quietly that they don't really do anything with camera sensors, computer vision. Yeah, the 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 stuff that they're doing to accelerate with some of the new Snapdragon stuff that's I think public, but I'm not sure. They're doing um, like they're accelerating machine vision stuff to the point that you'll have Snapdragon processors in a year or two that are able to to actually like do the machine vision stuff that right now has to happen on on the in the cloud on in in limited ways on de- like devices that use basically no power. It's bananas. Yeah, and they do it in two ways: one to increase battery life or mm-hmm. add features that now they can add. They can devote the processing power to add. Um, because they don't need that extra processing like, power like, to just run the phone. Yeah, like voice recognition is suddenly going to get better because we have hardware machine learning in these chips that's going to accelerate the the algorithms that we use to do voice recognition. Hmm. Um, did you see the story about how uh, it's estimated that Google pays Apple three billion dollars a year? For patents? Uh, no, just so Google is the default search engine in Safari. Three billion. That's the estimate. That's, I mean, how many f- phones does Apple sell a year? How many phones are running iOS right now? A billion? Two? A lot. Yeah. I mean, that's three. Uh, one buck per user doesn't seem un- unfair. Pure profit. 
three yeah. billion. That that by that math, based on their um, their public statements, uh, that licensing fee is five percent of Apple's profits. How much money does Apple? Wow. How much money yeah. does Google make on those billion users? Right. It's a lot, right? Yeah. Like, right. But who's in a position of strength here? Who, like, if Google said, "I don't," want, we want to stop paying three billion a year, which is, by the way, a ton of money. Um, well, but but Google Google clearly has a spreadsheet someplace that says, "Look, the average user spends three dollars. We we earn three dollars on these users. Three billion is a lot of money. So if they make two billion on a one billion dollar investment, that's pretty good return. But can they afford to not? Uh, to not pay the licensing, could Apple afford not to receive licensing? And would they? What would they do? What well, would the Google? They're not going to go with Bing. Yeah, I mean, they, I guess they do they use Bing on, 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 on Siri, right? Yeah. So what, what is it, what is the option? They go to someone else and try to get a licensing fee from someone I else. Mean, they try to squeeze money from Microsoft or not have it's a not default like search around. For someone to, convenience-wise to type they're, in they're a search engine, not have a default search. Right. They'll yeah. probably right. they probably would spin their own search. It would be terrible. Oh God, that sounds horrible. They would make no money and spend their, have to spend money on make spending up their own search. There would, there's something compelling about a search that's not driven by advertising. So, well, like, so right now you can actually choose between Google, Bing, Yahoo, and Duck Duck Go. Duck Duck Go is an Asia thing, isn't it? I assume. No, Duck Duck. How about that? So uh, they would just make it not the default. They would leave Google oh. in there. They just can't. No one can determine how many people would switch back to Google manually. That's right. DuckDuckGo is the search engine that doesn't track you. They don't do advertising. They don't store our personal information. I like DuckDuckGo. And, and Yahoo used to uh, outsource all the stuff to Bing anyway. That hmm. was part of that deal. Oh, yeah? It was, it was a, mar- largely the same results. Yeah. I don't know. I think most people would switch back and they'd probably be better off. The inconvenience of having to type in a, a search engine URL. No, no, no. They would just go into the settings and switch it back. Oh. Oh, make that like... Yeah. Oh, would Apple be malicious enough Did to defaults, sort of remove that no, default? The defaults make a huge difference. Bad idea. I know they make wow. a huge difference, yeah. but is it worth $3 billion? If, if they're a lot if of they make money. $9 billion off of $3 billion, they'll mm-hmm. keep paying it. If they don't make that money, then they'll stop paying but it. But I'm saying maybe if they didn't pay the $3 billion, they would only make 7 in which case it is worth it. Maybe, but I bet if they didn't pay the $3 billion, they'd make 2 and that is not worth it. No, that's <laughs> not. No, I, that's the math. Yeah. That's the math they have to figure out, and yeah. no one Who's knows going to switch, cause, until cause, someone makes a bold move. Because here's the thing. It's not, like, it's not like Apple, if they change that, it's not like Apple's going to make it easy and give them an API-level way to change the default search engine back from like a click on the Google homepage. They'll have to click click a thing and then they'll have to follow some instructions on that page and people will get to like step three and be like, fuck this. Right. And then they'll just use DuckDuckGo. And, and Apple also, <laughs> can they control what the default search engine is on like a third party browser like Chrome? They can't. No. Right? And they, nobody they installs have the data. Chrome. Anyone using a third party browser knows how to get in the system right. settings anyway. Yeah. Right. So they know the data of like how many people are using third party. Those, yeah. I use Chrome. A I, fraction I, of a percent of people use third party browsers, I bet. Yeah. So far, it's the only browser that has access to some hardware acceleration. Yeah, not that that changed with iOS nine. But everyone has to use their JavaScript engine. Yeah, everybody has to use their JavaScript. Yeah, that's what engine. it is. Yeah, that's right. It's all uh, the same browser. It's just a different frame around it. Any uh, any other uh, technology news do you we, guys want to go over? Do you want to talk about the Cloudflare thing? It's a it's a little political. Um, but there's a there's a neo Nazi website that you that was a su- subscriber to Cloudflare. Um, if you don't know, Cloudflare is a is a service that uh, sites that get DDoS use. Uh, they basically sit at the DNS level and they analyze traffic coming in. And if it looks like a legitimate user, then they push it onto the site to the actual servers. And if it doesn't, then they they bit bucket at some place so that if your site gets DDoS, Cloudflare will will stop that DDoS. They've been around for a long time. And they do a lot of good work. They they work on like Steve uh, security Steve Gibson's site. Um, and a lot of other like high traffic, high target sites. They, uh, the CEO, they've had an internal conversation about how they want to handle the the new fascist movement in America and whether they want to keep those people sites from getting DDoS. And uh, the they posted an internal, well, they didn't post it, an internal letter leaked yesterday that said basically, look, we're taking off this one particular site that uses Cloudflare. This is a capricious decision on the part of the CEO. This was from the CEO to the employees. You know, I don't think it's right that one person or one company can decide 
who who gets to be on and who doesn't get to be on the internet. But at the same time, I go on the forums of this site, and there's the users there are saying, "Hey, Cloudflare is not is letting us keep doing this. They're clearly one of us, and we don't want that to represent our company. So we we want to make it really clear that we don't support these people." Um, and like it puts up an interesting like it, as the internet has become more centralized over the last decade, as the web itself has become more centralized, it's an interesting question, right? Like Jeff Bezos, as the CEO of Amazon and the owner of AWS, hosts a massive, massive percentage of the world's websites right now. And presumably, at any point, if there's somebody on that site that he doesn't like, whether you know he can say, I mean, it's not presumably he can say, look. This site is against our terms of service. The terms of services are all vague and open enough that you can change it at any moment. Um, you know, they can kill any website they want, from tested to Netflix to whatever else, whatever else it happens to be. Um, and it's it's a it's it's like I I I am all for Cloudflare turning off. I mean, just to be clear, they're not actually turning off the site. They're just saying, hey, we're not going to protect you from DDoSs anymore, so the internet will work that work that out the rest of the way. Um, it, it's just a, it's a, I thought it was an interesting, like the email that he sent out to the internal staff was contradictory in and of itself. And I agreed with all of the different contradictions, basically. I feel, from what I've read, this group can't even get a website up to begin with. They went, they moved DNS to Russia. They went Russia, to, well, Russian they shut servers. down too. Oh, really? Yeah. So Go, oh. GoDaddy got rid of him. Google said no after two hours. Yeah. And then they moved to Russia and Russia said no. Oh, well, so. life finds a way. <laughs> I guess problem for the modern age um i think that does it for technology news oh uh oh the essential phone is on sale now by the way if we care about phones oh, this is andy rubin's phone andy rubin's phone what's you want to spend special why is it special the, the lack does of bezels daydream lack no lack super lack of bezels yeah. and uh it's a beautiful design does it, it's a like premium charge phone. wirelessly um i think it does is the camera uh, good camera is supposed to go there's camera attachments uh, but yeah, risky, risky venture to spend so much money on a startup's phone, even with that pedigree. Yeah. Uh, before we move on to our next segment, I do want to thank the sponsor of this week's episode, and that is Eero. Uh, Eero, uh, whatever your Wi-Fi needs, Eero has the power to seamlessly blanket your home in fast, reliable Wi-Fi via Ethernet, wireless, or any combination. Simply set it on a flat surface or plug the Eero beacon into a wall outlet to expand coverage in any room. Not to mention, with the addition of a third 5 gigahertz radio, the second generation Eero is now tri-band and twice as fast as its predecessor, which lets you do more in every room of your home simultaneously. And with the addition of a through new thread radio, Eero can now connect to low-power devices such as doors, doorbells, locks, and other sensors. Meanwhile, the Eero Beacon is half the size but even more powerful than the original Eero. And whichever model you choose with Eero's incredible customer support, you can get, uh, you can call and get a hold of a Wi-Fi expert within 30 seconds. I set up Eero with the new Eero Beacon in my home, and now I have access to all sorts of nooks and crannies, Wi-Fi in places I didn't have access before, uh, which lets me connect to my phone and um, and my Nintendo Switch and play almost anywhere. Uh, setup's pretty easy. You just download the app, uh, run the app, and it tells you whether you've put your phone in a good spot. You can check your bandwidth to see if it's a Wi-Fi problem or if it's your internet connections problem. Now, you uh, listeners of the podcast can get free overnight shipping by going to Eero.com, selecting overnight as a shipping option, and using the offer code TEST, T-E-S-T, at checkout. Again, that's Eero.com with the offer code TEST, and thank them for sponsoring this week's episode. The VR Minute, virtual reality this week. Will left the room. The only person <laughs> working in VR left the room uh, to kick off the VR Minute. All Hopefully right. he's leaving to bring something back that's interesting that we can talk about on camera. Last week we reported that Alt Space died. It was a sad episode. Super, super sad. Uh, Alt Space, one of the original meta- metaverses. Space where people would gather together, maybe watch a live concert together, watch, discuss, create their own costumes. Well, it's back. It's saved. Yeah. Just like SoundCloud, saved with, a, 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 with new investment. Well, yeah, anonymous investment. But they said that the, somebody stepped in and they said, you know, we want this to keep going. And uh, what's interesting, uh, as Engadget reported, was that Palmer Lucky had just posted a poll on Twitter not too long before they got saved that mm. said, should I try to save Altspace VR? Mm. Yes or no? And 67% said yes. 
Why would people say no? I'm not sure why 33% said no. You know, maybe they're like me with the last story, which is like, well, if it's supposed to die, let it die. But um, no, it's, it's pretty early in VR, so I, I think it's a good idea to give these uh, plants a little more water. See what happens. All right. Glad it's going on. Yeah. Congratulations to those guys. Um, Res Infinite also came out this past week for VR. Well, it was in VR. It was a PSVR launch title. Yeah, it was. It was on PSVR, and it was one of those games that I never bought. But I, um, oh every, my everyone, God. Jeremy, everyone, everyone recommended it. Like even like our buddy Dave Reese. It's uh, the best game. People from different corners are like saying, "Yeah, if you get PSVR, definitely try Res Infinite." Uh, so it's out, out now on Steam. It's a it's perfect. And Oculus Home. I don't know. I I it's perfect. Bucks. I think it's only on Steam, actually. I don't know if no, it's, it's on. Both. Is it on Oculus Home? Yeah. Too? Okay. Now I actually I I have not played it yet. But have you I, played Res. Yeah, of course, but but my son played it and he was just kind of met on it. What I'm telling you, and he's what he's pretty good at. Like he's got a pretty good judge of cool VR. So I don't know. I, um, I'm I gotta have us talk with him. If it was, can you do first person? Uh, no, it's always third person. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. It's it's, it's, it's too out of body. I don't it, know. It's maybe I, he's not into the aesthetic. I love the aesthetic. I mean, if you. Look, it references a lot of stuff. It references like like if you don't like Res, you're not gonna like Res Infinite. There's nothing new there that's yeah. gonna make you like it better. The gameplay is basically you highlight a bunch of enemies and then you let go and you fire missiles at them. Mm-hmm. That's the extent of it. But everything you can use both hands. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, it's motion controlled, but everything reacts to how you deploy these missiles the, it's, and shoot it's a rhythm enemies. game. The music comes to life. Yeah. Yeah. It's, and it, well, and it has a very like late '90s cyberpunk aesthetic. It was originally a Dreamcast game, I guess, or a PS2 game. Mm. I think it was Dreamcast. I think Dreamcast too. It's a te- Tetsuya Mizuguchi made it. Um, oh, it wasn't Jeff Minter. No, fuck the no. whole thing. No, but no, he- no, no. This is this is so. Um, Miz made Space Channel Five, and um, there was another remake of this. He, he did a lot of like rhythmy music games. He's really into like electronic J-pop and stuff like Got that. It. They call it synesthetic because it's yeah. combining your audio senses and visual senses mm-hmm. and, and and motion to, to all unify. Well, it, and when it originally was released for the Dreamcast, I guess it had a like a they called it the trance vibrator, but it was basically a thing that was <laughs> it wasn't that kind of vibrator. It's basically a thing you were supposed to like put on your someplace, I guess, and it it pulsed in time with the music. How about that? So yeah, because the, the the Dreamcast controllers, of course, didn't have rumble. So have you Speaking, tried it? I have not tried it. Okay, we gotta yeah. try it. Yeah, we gotta try that, and also um, oh, we guys, gotta try it's, it's really good. The uh, the new zombie um, uh, killing floor incursion. Oh, What's is that play? out now? Yeah. That's, oh, yeah, awesome. So gotta try that. that. As That's well. the co-op. I would love to play that with either of you guys. Yeah, it's on the Oculus platform. Well. Oh wow. Well. Yeah. Um, speaking of rumbling, um, there's what is that supposed to mean, Norm? Well, <laughs> I, think, I think we, we all know. We, we know where your preferences lie. Uh, I mean, you have both headsets. You can just I, have one plug, plug. I have one headset plugged in every day for work. Would you say you're platform agnostic? So um, on a personal level or yes, a professional per- level? Personal level. Probably not. <laughs> well, he has access to new hardware. He's he has that's true. Greatest I, I, and greatest. We're going to talk about it in just a second. Uh, but uh, first, we'll talk about uh, Rumble. Um, there are. Oculus is putting out um, new buffered haptics features for, I guess, better control over the uh, the, the the motors inside. This stuff is really um, cool. So this is, this is just inside. a software update, to be clear. Yes. Yeah. So existing Oculus Touch controllers right now it's like a waveform. I think they mm-hmm. send and it lets you do the change the frequency and the the intensity. Not of, a whole lot you can do with it though. With those, but it's it's and in, and we, in VR we something that we know is that it doesn't need to be. As strong feedback as what you're expecting in the real world, it's all relative. Yeah. Like as, as long as you have a good spectrum of, with fine delineations of feedback and precision location, um, you can convince a lot. Right? I think that this is a something is better than nothing area because once we get stronger haptics and we look back on this era, this is going to seem pretty pretty weak. But I mean, but the, the 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 experience with the first wave of hardware is that like if you play Zenblade, you have the goggles on. If your eyes see the impact with a piece of fruit between the sword, you hear the impact of the piece of fruit between the sword, and then you get just the tiniest, the tiniest of tiny bumps. Yeah. It's enough that your brain is like, oh right, I hit the yeah. I hit the fruit. Better than nothing. So what they're saying with these this new system is one latency is reduced from thirty three milliseconds to ten milliseconds. That's the big deal. That's supposed to be a really big deal because you cue them up. I think. Mm-hmm. And then also, so it's better alignment between the, the, the rumble and what you see in the headset. And then also, it's supposed to allow a better um, adjustment of those vibrations and frequencies. Um, so you can actually uh, adjust the amplitude, which is the strength of, of that, between 0 and 255 degrees of, of force um, more, more, um, more often. 
right now you can only hit because the way that the motors hit. Oh, the, okay. You you can't you can't like have it in max strength the whole time. So I was hoping for a demo link at the bottom of the of the release article, but there's no you know there's no demo there's no demo app. I want to feel probably, it. there's probably a demo app in the SDK. The, yeah, you have to and it's been, it it's been a few days now. I bet there's something out now. But something that the touch controllers do not have is... Are we moving on? Yeah. I want to say one quick thing. Oh, yes, yes. Um, there, when this came out, there was a thread in, in our Oculus about it, and uh, everyone in that thread, I was shocked. Like, there was this, a sub-thread developed. Everyone was saying, you know, if you want to feel great haptics, try 11 table tennis. Yeah, we've really? done. We've yeah. played table tennis. And everyone says the haptics in that game are unlike anything else. Like if you have a ball that's balancing, just rolling on the paddle itself, you can literally tell where the ball is on the paddle. Mm. HD haptics. That's yeah. interesting. Yeah. How many ice cubes are in the Switch controller? This is Joy-Con. Uh, you, so, I, yeah. I was going to say, there's there's games out now for the Switch. I want to say it's like a Namco Museum or something that uses the, the HD rumble really, really, really for evil. It's not good. What are you talking about for evil? It's bad. Why? It's just a bad implementation. It's really way, 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 way too strong. Huh. Yeah. Hmm. Um, but something hit. that the touch controllers do not have is mm -hmm. the ability to use them without actually holding the controllers, which the Knuckles controllers, Will's holding them in his hand right now. you got to watch Whoa. the video. Will has Knuckles controllers. I've, for, I got, I got for, the Knucks, yo. For Steam, for Steam VR. Um, how are they? Well, they're, I mean, they're prototype hardware, but they're really neat. You can, uh, like, basically when you put them in, they have... I'm talking in the right spot. Yeah, they have capacitive sensors along the the inside edge where your fingers grip. So you you, I guess I should take a step back. There's a neoprene stretchy thing that you jam your fingers into, and then that just holds the controller in place on your on your hand, right? And you have to adjust that so it's at the right place on your hand. Oh, so you don't have to change that, like undo a strap every time you put no, it. No, no, you just jam your finger in. That's and you usually nice. leave it tight enough. Like I leave it tight enough that that it just kind of rests naturally. Um, the capacitive sensor, the, the touchpad is more of a bowl on this than, than just a flat pad like it was in the initial wands. Um, but the interesting thing is that the whole bottom inside edge of the, of the grip where your fingers go is capacitive as yeah. well as the trigger, just like on the Oculus Touch. But you, you, it, it can model your hand movement based on where your hands hit this edge. So you get you get actual. It's not one to one finger movement, but it's close enough that it works really well. Mm -hmm. um, it's a little bit of a jump to like learning how to use it. Uh, you do a kind of initial calibration process where you grip and release, grip and release, grip and release until your fingers look like they're in the right place. Mm -hmm. Uh, and you can do that anytime that the calibration starts to drift, which is, I assume, one of the things that they're working on. It seems like that's even gotten better. The calibration specifically for those fingers? Eat, eat, like anytime your hand moves in the grips, you need to recalibrate. Oh, gotcha. Like where your yeah. where your fingers are, or else or else you end up in a weird situation where like your fingers are all splayed out in an unnatural looking way. Hmm. Um, the new pad is a dramatic improvement because the depth of that bowl, thumb pad. the thumb pad, lets you see exactly, like without having to look down at your hand to see where the dot is, you can tell where your finger is because it's a much, much, much deeper concave bowl. So the, the bowl. radius, um, the diameter of this circle is smaller, smaller than yeah. on your uh, Vive controllers, uh, but it has a deeper recess, which is more ergonomic because your finger actually dips down. Well, and I think it's probably about the same surface area because it's deeper. I'm not 100% on that. Is it still the uh, linear actuators for that the haptic feedback? On, Wait, I don't know about thumb? that. I haven't looked at that. I, I would assume so based on how, how it works. Hmm. Um, it seems it's clickier now too. So you can, you don't, you press it less by accident. Hmm. Uh, and then the, the, there's two buttons now, you know, what used to be the grip button and that kind of in-game menu button are on either side of the pad. Uh, and the steam menu button is the round one on the bottom. Yeah. And then it's still a two, two stage trigger. What I found is that because of the way you wrap it around your hand, the, it's not an even amount of pressure along the ridge of the top and back. It more grips onto your, closer to your pinky on the bottom of your yeah, hand. Yeah, like the, 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 the like. crook of your thumb and your forefinger. It's very comfortable. I've used them for extended periods. So I actually, like, just putting it on, I'm, I'm pushing my hand all the way to the bottom because that's where I want it to grip so mm. that my my thumb, my fingers can access the buttons, but they don't have to necessarily grip, hold onto Like, I want to not be gripping on this as a default so, pose. So the, pro I mean, the things that are good about this is, is that it has the same benefit that the Oculus Touch controller has in that there is a... A canonically correct way to hold this. So if you're doing something that requires, you know, IK to do elbows or wrists like I do, 
it's really, really good. Like you get a much cleaner signal out of the the hand position about what the actual like the like you can infer much more about the orientation of the hand from the position of the controller than you can with the wands, which people can hold, you know, like a like a like a magic wand or like a baseball bat or like a golf club. Um, and they now are matched. Left and right are have to be left and right. Left, right or left and right. That's good. I mean, that's easy to figure out based on position with the headset, and and, and they have APIs to fix that. The the thing that I've noticed is that the trigger seems like it's a little far forward. I mean, they're still working on the hardware shape and design for this. They they actively said that, so these may not be what the final controllers look like. They may may not even ever make the controllers. I I don't know. Um, it feels like the trigger is a little far forward to me, though. That like that's my one piece of feedback that I've sent them so far. And then the software is, you know, they're figuring it out. There's new stuff with the software every week. But um, and you mentioned the additional button, right? The, well, the additional button is what used to be the grip button. So yeah. it's the same number of buttons oh, as the, before. These are the same. Uh, one of them is the menu button, and one of them shows up as the grip button. When you use these with the legacy games that don't support knuckles yet, gotcha, which is basically gotcha. everything, uh, you have like a Steam controller style pop up that lets you choose different options for models so like you can ha- you can use the grip button as the grip button you can use the grip as the grip button and you can toggle it on or toggle it off mm-hmm. so so you like you can have toggle on toggle off or grip to hold however you want to do it and it maps it without so old games work with the new controllers no problem i want to know how it's, what it's like to play echo arena with this i know you haven't played much echo arena i have not played much echo uh, arena but it is supported by uh revive and but I don't think Revive supports Knuckles yet. The Revive dev has Knuckles. Okay. So it, it will soon if it doesn't I'll already. I'll have to look at Revive again. I haven't looked at it in a while. That. I mean, there's a way that the games, existing games will automatically have compatibility because mm-hmm. there is parity in terms of the actions. But really, the advantage of this can be new games that actually don't expect you to hold on to controllers and animate as such. Like, yeah. Like you know, g- having guns that appear in your hand when you actually grab them and, mm-hmm. and hold on to them as as a natural pose, as opposed to pushing a button, you know, gunslinging, doing a duel in the you know in a, uh, a game like Dead Buried, it's going to be much more interesting when you're hovering your hands when you're not actually gripping something and you have that that additional action yeah, I like that. as a mechanic. Well, and and because you have a real definitive moment of when you release and when you grab. Uh, versus, say, pulling a trigger or even squeezing the grab button on the Oculus Touch controllers, which I think is the best way to do it right now. And grabbing is not, um, it, it's not uh, binary. Right. Grabbing is because they have multiple, the capacitance on, on the grip is technically multiple fingers. Exactly. The developer can make a grab when you have three fingers on, two fingers on, when you are when you grab it in a certain way. So a lot of the challenge with this is figuring out that nuance, like figuring out whether you should grab at the beginning, like the very the very moment you detect fingers coming in or when you wait until they get all the way down. Like it, it's it's less ambiguous for the user than say pulling a trigger to grab something. So you can do things like juggle, right? It's hard to juggle, but somebody's going to get there sooner rather than later. It's very pretty cool. cool. Yeah, we'll yeah. be talking more about it on uh, this week's episode of Projections, uh, shooting a video oh, using the that sounds controller. Fun. I hope so. Um, Testing that's it. this week. Hey, what have you guys been testing? <laughs> Aside from knuckles controllers, Will, anything you've been testing? Um, I I got a G Sync monitor. Oh, I was always curious and I needed a 4K IPS panel. So I bought a 4K IPS G-Sync monitor, which was kind of expensive. Um, Why did you need a G-Sync monitor? I didn't. I needed a 60 hertz monitor and I needed a 4K monitor. Okay. And I wanted a G-Sync monitor because it was like 150 bucks more than the non-G-Sync monitor. So I figured, you know, let's go. Let's get crazy. Um, but it's but the 4K G-Sync monitors are only 60 hertz panels. They're not 144 hertz panels, which is what the non- 4K ones are, like the 2560 by 1440 ones. And one of the advantage of a G-Sync monitor is <laughs> if you are running games natively at 4K on your computer screen, you can dip, sometimes dip below 60, dip below... You can dip way below 60 if you're running and, 4K native, yeah. And still not see tearing. Um, yeah, I think it's a, as much about the frame jitter and stuff as well, like the micro stutters and stuff like that seem to have gone away when I switched to the, to mm-hmm. the G-Sync monitor. Isn't, Which is, isn't the idea if, if it dipped, it would drop to 30? 
and like you wouldn't get that sweet it's variable. Like, Forty eight. Uh, no, yeah. the G sinks are variable. Yeah. But a non G sink would dip further down, and it would become much more stuttery. Now, now you get whatever or frame rate. Match mismatch. Um, you, you'll get frame. half a frame, and then yeah. it'll draw the next frame. Okay. Yeah. Um, the the thing that is nice is when you're doing like fast movements, it's much crisper. It seems like. Uh, like you have much less blur as you're doing a fast movement, like in a first person shooter or something like that. And that's mm-hmm. on a 144 hertz, which that's, is different. That's that's yeah. about because 144 hertz monitor is running at 2560 or even at 1080. Um, people play competitive uh, shooters, they love those monitors. I've never even seen so that. Smooth. Yeah, I kind of, I kind of ridiculous. Like, I, since I'm streaming a lot of, I, I was playing PUBG at 4K scaled down a little bit in the engine, so I had a solid 100 frames a second. And then I set up a two PC streaming setup, which means it has to be 1080p, which means that um, two PC streaming setup. Yeah. So instead of running, OB- so if you run OBS on the machine that you're playing, uh, playing the that? game on, it adds a couple of frames of lag. Oh no. Yeah, which is bad. Yeah. Um, I realized I was playing without streaming one day, and I realized I was much better at the game than when I was streaming. Hmm. A couple and I of frames thought, is I, like yeah, a couple of frames is bad. A couple hundred milliseconds. And I had two PCs just sitting around and a capture card. So I set up a two PC streaming setup, which was an interesting challenge. Uh, the upshot is that if you use a piece of software called Voice Meter Banana, <laughs> you can basically split. Do you know about Voice Meter Banana? Oh, yes. We had to use it for uh, big screen for a while. Oh yeah, okay, that makes sense to stream big stream. No, to get, yeah, to get to stream within stream, big stream. Yeah. 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 So um, you pipe audio out to your headphones and to the HDMI capture card, and then everything just kind of works. Um, but yeah. That was interesting setting that up. I, I ended up setting up with a Blackmagic Intensity Pro 4K capture card. Between that and the 4K. green screen. Do you have an esports chair yet? I don't know. I'm not. I'm Look, steel case. After we finish here, I'm going to go over to your showroom and look at a steel case gesture. It's the wire cutter recommendation for the happiest ass you'll ever have. Um, You're not streaming in 4K, are you? No, you can't stream in 4K. So you just capture in 4K? I just capture in 4K. And oh, man. I haven't been here since I talked about getting Comcast Gigabit. You have Comcast Gigabit? Comcast Gig. For... <laughs> That's what they call it. Wow. Congratulations. Yeah, is, it, I know. is it fiber? No. Oh, it's, just still, it's still cable. It's, it's Doxis 3.1. Uh, so you get a gigabit down. Gigabit down. How much up? 35 megabits up. Okay. Cool. So it's not great. They're gonna. I think that they're gonna have symmetric soon. It's just uh, you know, software updates. What is your real world speed test? Nine hundred. That's not bad. So good. it's like the That's normal ten percent. What do you got, Sonic? Nine eighty. Yeah. Nine eighty. All right. Yeah. It's like nine 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 hundred to nine forty is I think is the fastest I've seen. Nine eighty up. I, that's that's the winner. <laughs> I I did I downloaded Doom in twelve minutes. That's the most gangster I've ever heard you, Norm. Uh, Sonic actually distributed frisbees in my neighborhood recently, because they're coming to my hood. Did you tell them that the frisbees are nice, <laughs> but you'd rather have fiber? They're actually like, oh, is this a way to like get in your backyards? Like, <laughs> oh, the, the, the frisbee went to the backyard. We need to get in there and get, get oh, up. The, and then now we're oh, might as well go up the up up. Uh, Let's fiber you up. Yep. Yep. No, I don't know. Um, anyway, the Comcast gig was like thirty, thirty, forty dollars a month extra over what I was paying for two fifty. So I was happy to get it for the upstream. Awesome. That's great. I'm jealous. Yeah. Gigabit is gigabit. That's great. Yeah. Uh, anything on your side, Jeremy? No. I've, I've just been on the yeah, road. On I've the been testing USB dongles for my MacBook Pro. Oh, no. I USB-C, lo- the nightmare continues. Lost three to this trip. Oh, no. Somebody you know, gave it a little yank. They fall right apart. What? USB to USB-C adapters. Oh, that's terrible. That's to be expected, right? I mean, there's a tiny little No, thing that's not to be expected. It that's is, not okay. If you have an adapter, that's how it goes. I mean, these little holes are tiny. You got a big honk in USB, that, you know, A I'm thing just going saying, to it. That is not a normal cost of doing business. Did it's you return silly. it? Did you take it back to no, him no, and make no, him no, replace you it? You can't make no no, I'm talking about like some kid like pulls his iPad and it's like yeah. plugged into the computer. You can't that's part of doing business. So I guess the only real solution is to get native cables or use a hub. Can I can I make a suggestion? Yeah. Instead of plugging are you charging the iPad on this or the you iPad, putting, yeah, putting every, content like onto the computer it. was like the charge hub for the train car. There's a company out there. They're called Anker, mm. A N K E R. Yeah, I've heard of them. Yeah. For twenty four dollars, mm-hmm. you can get a charge port that has six ports on it. Mm-hmm. It plugs into a normal hundred twenty volt wall plug, and then the kids can plug into that, and they won't destroy your eighty dollar adapters. Mm. That's a, that's also a solution. Yeah. Were there power outlets in the train? One. Oh. Just one. One. Was it a real one, or was it one of those like real. five amp? No, it's fine. I was five a, amp electric razor. I don't only know how deals. much amps you get, but it was one hundred twenty volts. Okay. Charge Pretty the computer good. and everything else. 
And I, I, when they do the train jam, I wonder where they, I guess they must have charging stations. Uh, in the observation car, there's yeah, outlets everywhere. everywhere. Okay. Yeah. So you go get some work done out there. So I need some new adapters. I want to go take a train. I feel like I could get so much work done on a train. No distractions. You really can. I almost feel, feel like 48 hours isn't enough. For a jam? No, for a train. Mm. I want more. I want a week on a train. I had a friend. Some people do it. You know, Amtrak does a writer's fellowship norm where they basically mm. give you a pass that's good for three months. You can go anywhere you right. want. Right. That's oh, that's like the American Airlines right. golden ticket. Well, but only for three months. Yeah. But you're supposed to write. You have to write poems or something while you're on the train <laughs> about how majestic the West is. Not memes. No memes. What about right. you? Do you test work? anything? Uh, what have we got going on? So I was down at LA uh, talking about this on um, Still Entitled, but um, helped put together a big CNC. A four by eight CNC with cool. a two head what did, what did you, and plasma cutter. What did you cut with the plasma cutter? We didn't talk uh, about we it. We talked uh, cut a, um, a steel s- tested sign. Okay. Yeah, that we'll have we'll bring it back up. Uh, it makes you have to put it over water, and it gets the water really dirty. How how thick can you cut? You cut thick steel. Really, qu- quarter inch. So how? you could make like rings. Like you could cut a ring out and then polish the ring. Burnish, uh, I don't think you can get uh, so it does a pierce and then like plasma cutting is this whole whole science There's a thing yeah okay how thick was the metal you cut uh, it was eighth inch, it's a steel sheet I want to say eighth inch how quick was it it was very fast like faster than a laser cutter almost, mm. almost. wow that's yeah. really cool yeah I remember when we went to that to tech shop and we saw the laser the plasma cutter there or no I guess it was a water jet there yeah what's the edge like. So the uh, that's the you you can't get perfect consistency on the, on the edge and uh, the time it takes actually the longest time it takes is to do the initial pierce and then the, the cutting because hmm. uh, it's a it, it's all like varying the voltage. Is there a thing underneath as well that catches the the other end or is it just like water? Okay, it just all falls into the water. Yeah, um, and uh, oh, sorry, what was your question? What is the edge like? Oh, the edge. Edge is pretty clean. I mean, you, is it like, you, you is can, it, you'll, you'll still need to do a little bit of deburring, but it's hmm. still pretty clean. But is it like uh, is it like a laser where it's there's like a little bit of a figure eight, or is it or, or a V, or is it like a is it like some you is it like the, straight the, like a saw? Like what's the curve like? Oh, there's a little bit of a curve, little very of, very okay. little bit. Okay. Yeah, but it's pretty straight. What is plasma? Part. Plasma is the fourth state of matter. <laughs> <laughs> Liquid, metal, <laughs> nothing, nothing liquid, gold. liquid, solid, gas, yeah, plasma. Yeah, yeah, I heard that. Yeah, we're gonna get some experts to talk about it in the future. Okay, it, it, yeah. get, it gets really hot, and the electrons are in a free state. There's no experts in the room. No, the, the electrons <laughs> no. are in a free state. <laughs> Definitely not. I, I, have a, I have a fucking biochemistry degree. You a holes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, and we have an outro this week. Oh, I, is I, that I, it? Sometimes we talk about what's coming up on the show. I mean, on the site. But I uh, can. We can go straight to outros. What have we got? Yeah, this was submitted a day ago. Has to be gold. Oh, from Toasted Beans. I'd be really impressed if it was me yelling about something earlier in the episode. <laughs> what? We're doing this live? Hi there, I didn't see you. Toasted. Gary's going to be back with another take. Yeah. Yes, back, back in every way that it's possible hey. to be back. Do it! <laughs> Just do it! I was angry. Oh, wow. Oh, hey, I got a letter from SoundCloud, by the way, the other day that said we were almost out of downloads on that tested outro number two. Oh, no. So you need to re-upload it someplace. You should probably download it again and then re-upload it someplace else. <laughs> well, good thing SoundCloud is still going to be around. Yeah. All right. We'll see you next week.